And here's the thing. It's your network, which is the N, plus your database, which is the D. When we combine those two things together and we pour fuel on it or we pour gasoline on it, we add some leverage to it, that's when opportunities open up, that's when deals open up, invitations open up, resources open up. It allows you to quickly and easily move through and navigate this wackadoodle world we call business. Awesome. So welcome everybody to Networking Riches 2.0. Uh, I am so unbelievably excited to have each and every one of you here. It is just a thrill and an honor to, uh, to get to play with you. And we are going to have an absolute blast together. I cannot wait uh, to, to get to know each and every one of you. We're going to have a lot of fun during this. So my name is Casey Everhart. If we have not met, um, I'm, I'm kind of your workshop leader for, for the next couple of days. Uh, it is an honor and a thrill to be here. I have spoke and trained all over the world, teaching and training what you're going to learn today. Okay. And what you're going to learn over the next two days is really a formula, a system, a process to help you build any, the most valuable asset I believe you can build. And that is your network. This is going to be applicable for all businesses, small, medium, large. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's very interactive. So I, I encourage you to keep your cameras on as much as possible. I encourage you to use the chat. Um, here's the thing. I only have one rule for, for any engagement today, and that is don't be a weirdo, <laughs> okay? If you're a weirdo, um, then we're just going to systematically kind of say, hey, please don't be a weirdo, and then, uh, and then they will uh, weirdo you out. Um, but I'm really excited. Um, I've said um like 30 times this morning. This is a great event because I get to be completely transparent. And this is so transparent. I've got Bruce Waterman, one of our producers, sitting right behind me. Over the course of my career, I have not held a job. The last job I had I, I was when I was 23, 2023. 20, I used to be the general manager of an amusement park. And we'll talk a little bit about the amusement park and that, that whole story. But um, I became a general manager of an amusement park when I was 20. At 23, I ended up selling that water park and amusement park to Six Flags and uh, moved to Los Angeles to work in the movie business. And people always ask me in podcasts, like, how did you become a general manager of an amusement park, dropping a million dollars a day in the bank um, at age 20? And I just would kind of explain what I did. Then I moved to Los Angeles to work in the movie business. And three years after I moved here, I ended up winning an Oscar. And I won an Oscar for a movie called Being John Malkovich. Did anybody see Bean John Malkovich? I just want to see a show of hands. Few of you. Okay, awesome. I just want to see who my stoners are. Um, <laughs> because we were stoned when we made it. We were all skateboarders and, and we were making a, a fun, great movie. Uh, but I ended up winning an Oscar for that movie. I was the line producer, which is the money guy, three years after I, I moved here. After that, since then, I have bought, sold, built, consulted, and advised companies with essentially the same formula that we're going to work on over the next day and a half. How I moved to Los Angeles and was able to work my way up in Los Angeles three years, the process is going to be the next two days. How I uh, was able to become the general manager of an amusement park, same process as what you're going to learn today. How we took that park and grew it and built it so we could hand it off to another bigger conglomerate park to exit that business, that's the process that we're going to learn here today. Um, I speak and train all over the world. I do not say that because it's some braggy thing. I say that is I understand it was a means to an end. For me personally, I recognize that my business would grow if I was a one-to-many type presenter. So I became a speaker and being put out on stages and doing podcasts and all of that, not because I'm good looking. I mean, look at me. I've got a face for radio, <laughs> right? Let's face it. But I do recognize and understand the phrase that he who has the marker or she who has the marker makes the money. And we'll talk about what that really means a little bit later. But essentially, it means that when you can get your business in a one to message or one to many place, it grows. And I also call that leverage. So the reason I bring up the speaking thing isn't because I want to turn each and every one of you into a public speaker. I recognize that that is a scary, scary notion for a lot of people. I just want to share with you that the same process we're going to learn over the next day and a half are the same tools and processes that opened those doors for me. 
And I want these tools to be laid on your own business so that it can open up doors and opportunities for you in however and wherever you so choose. Okay, so um, it's important to recognize why you're here. You're here because there are two things that are my goal. Number one, to help you save time. And number two, to help you make more money in your business. The process that we're going to learn over the next two days, day and a half, is the same process. It's also the process that allowed me to go into Las Vegas, build 26 houses at one point in time for about 15 minutes. I controlled an entire 160 lot neighborhood in Las Vegas and was able to take all of those contracts, flip those contracts to the next 400 people in line, made a really good chunk of money, but it was because I had learned how to network or build a network or create a network or allow that network to flourish and figure out what other people want and give it to them. Okay. So it's how we're going to, it's, that's how we're going to roll in the land, uh, in the land of networking riches today. So today's going to be a lot about stories. I really want your interaction. I'm going to go through some housekeeping stuff real quick before we jump right in. So I've invited a few friends uh, to come play with us this weekend. Okay. So the first one up is Ryan Begley. Ryan is uh, recently moved to Temecula, California. And, um, and so, Bruce, I'm going to make an assumption that you're going on the slides because I'm not seeing any of that. Okay. Ryan is with us from Temecula, California. Uh, he just recently moved out to Temecula uh, by way of Santa Monica. He runs our entire digital agency, a digital marketing agency called Go Expand Now. I'm going to have him speak a couple of minutes um, it, right before lunch, I think we are, kind of laying out how we can lay out a technology blueprint that we can then go implement. Okay. Uh, next up, and I don't have a slide for him, is Dan. Dan is uh, Dan Steinhauer is in the back. He is out of Sydney, Australia. He is coming to us. It's 1 a.m. his time. Uh, so I really appreciate him being here. It's absolutely awesome to have him here. You will hear him periodically. He might be interacting with you guys in chat. Um, but he's here to really help um, be one of our producers. He's been my producer um, on so many shows and so many events. Uh, he knows he knows me very well. He and I are very close. He actually flew out here and has spent uh, the last few weeks on a cruise with us with some of our Platinum Inner Circle members. So um, it's good to have you, Dan. Cool. So next up is Yvonne. We call her YT. She'll be with us a little bit later and with us for the rest of the day. Um, she used to be my business coach when I first moved to Los Angeles. She was really impactful in helping me create a path that I didn't know I could even create. And so I've asked her to jump on here. She works with us now. She's absolutely amazing and awesome. She's so filled with wisdom. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to get to know her and get to meet her. Next up is Coach Linda. Um, Linda Feinholz is a friend of mine. She is a consultant. She is a strategist. She is a coach. She is a mentor to many. Uh, She is probably the most in-depth and broad in terms of her knowledge in how business works, both from a micro business perspective, as well as a macro business perspective. So she's worked um, with Disney and Imagineering, the big four accounting firms. She is a consultant. She has, she's had a podcast. She ran a massive, massive e-commerce business. Uh, Thanks Linda for being here. Next up out of London, uh, out of the UK, we've got coach K coach K Uh, She runs a massive business helping teaching uh, and creating podcasts for people. She's also a speaker, trainer, author. Uh, She's a marketer. She is also a a great strategist in helping people get out of the way of their own business. She owns a podcast agency where she can literally produce podcasts from soup to nuts, everything in between. Um, And I asked her to jump on here as well. I think you're going to really dig her as well. The foundation of this entire process, the the foundation is um, the foundation process of all of this is really designed to help unlock doors for you. At the end of the day, it's one of the things that once you learn this, you can't unlearn it. Once you learn this, I truly believe that you can walk into any scenario and become very quickly the most resourced person, the person that everybody comes to, the person who has all the influence. That's really my goal, right? It's actually really funny. Um, when you understand kind of the nuance of the nuances of all of this, things happen that you just, you can't even imagine. I'll give you a small example. 
Um, when I was a sophomore in high school, I had already started developing and learning some of this, some of this stuff on how to. I didn't like being the kid that was never invited on the inside. I didn't like being left on the outside of clubs. I didn't like being left on the outside of cliques. And I wanted to figure out how to maneuver my way, not being gross, not being a weirdo. And so like the, one of the big things that happened to me when I was in 10th grade, I went on a cruise to Mexico with my family and we went to Mexico and on the ship, they were shooting an episode of growing pains. I don't know if any of you remember the 80s hit, uh, hit growing pains, um, but Growing Pains was shooting an episode and I met the whole cast and crew and the whole cast and crew were on the ship. And what ended up happening was uh, I became friends with them. And so the reason I live in Los Angeles today is simply because they invited me down here to, to hang out with them. And so I became really good friends with Tracy Gold and Kurt Cameron and, and Jeremy Miller and Alan Thicke and Joanna Kearns and a little punk kid, 12 years old named Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> And uh, I actually became friends with all of them. I was very good friends with Leo when we were younger. And uh, because I understood kind of what we're going to learn, I was let into that club, right? And that club gave me more opportunities to work in the film business and the movie business and the TV business than anything. But it was because I became friends. So that's really at the end of the day today, what we're talking about is we're talking about how do we make our network be our friends? I will tell you, I operate in 100% integrity. I'm on purpose. I'm intentional. And it is really important that you understand that I always want to play on the high road. Okay, so you're not going to hear me talk about things that are sketch or sketch adjacent. Um, I really want you to operate from your gut and your heart in order to help you create impact. Okay, and if we can help create impact, then we're going to rock and roll. So networking is just a system. Okay, it's just a system and system stands for save yourself some time, energy and money. Okay, save yourself some time, energy and money. And that's really what we're going to do all throughout the next day, day and a half is talk about a system. Okay, now I put this slide in. If you were with me last weekend at the A to Z formula, you know that this is a slide I put in. I told you guys there I put this in almost every slide deck I do. And that is I want you to imagine yourself. As the business owner, you are sitting at your boardroom table and around you are all your advisors, okay? And those advisors can be made up of a bunch of different people, personalities. My recommendation is that you have people that don't think like you or that push you out of your limits or push you out of your comfort zone, um, as well as people like if you're in real estate and you are an agent, maybe your sales trainer is at your board of advisors, maybe your broker, maybe a Maybe it's your sales manager. Maybe you have somebody you follow on YouTube. Maybe you have Gary V. Like, I don't know about anybody else, but Gary V became a mentor of mine on YouTube. Uh, and then it was really cool because he and I started working together and I've worked with him a gazillion times. And now we have a different relationship, but he started out around my table from YouTube. I hope you invite me to sit at your table um, as well. But you want to have a group of people around you that you can kind of like, move all move all along with. And by the way, those of you that are booking coaching calls, it's awesome because I'm seeing text messages come by like, yay, they're booking, there's awesome. So please take advantage of that, right? Um, that's another opportunity for you to have somebody at your table. The more people you have at your table that have been there, done that, giving you different ex um, exciting new things that are going on and can shortcut the time frame for you to get from A to B, is where is where I want you mentally. Okay. I want you mentally to be thinking about this boardroom table and who, who are you inviting there for the next day and a half? I want to just say thank you for inviting me to sit at your table for the next day and a half. Okay. So there is a formula that I that I literally just designed this formula because I really wanted to succinctly and shortcut how. Um, I want you to think about your business, right? Because even though we're talking about networking in general, we're going to be really talking about building your business. Um, and it doesn't matter to me whether you're a service-based business, an e-commerce business, a real estate business, uh, a brick and mortar business. Maybe you run a network marketing and direct sales business. All of this works, but there's a formula. And that formula, that formula is actually very easy and it will unlock a lot to you once you understand the formula. So we're going to we're going to spend some time 
coming back to this slide, but if you want to write this down, it'd be great. And here it is. Parentheses N plus D times L, okay, equals cash, okay? N plus D times L equals cash. And here's the thing. It's your network, which is the N, plus your database, which is the D. When we combine those two things together and we pour fuel on it or we pour gasoline on it, we add some leverage to it, that's when opportunities open up. That's when deals open up, invitations open up, resources open up. It allows you to quickly and easily move through and navigate this wackadoodle world we call business, okay? So this slide you're going to see multiple times throughout the day, and we're going to really focus today and tomorrow primarily on the networking piece. We're going to spend a tiny bit of time on the database database piece and a tiny bit of time on the leverage, um, but we're going to really focus on this network because if you understand the network piece, building a database and adding leverage, those are other skill sets. And like I said, we're going to touch on them. We're not going to go super, super deep, but we're going to touch on them for sure. It is change o'clock. It's now o'clock. And the reason I say it's now o'clock is it's time for many of you to flip the switch. I saw you on here this morning. I saw many of you that have been here multiple times, which is awesome, right? I thank you for coming back. Your business thanks you. Your customers thank you. The world thanks you for being here. But for some of you, it's time to flip the switch. It's time for you to actually go into full-blown action. And that action might be a little bit uncomfortable. And I say a little bit uncomfortable, kind of tongue in cheek, because some of the things I'm gonna suggest for you to do, to try, to strategize, to implement over the next day um, are gonna feel a bit weird. I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna be real. They're gonna feel a bit like, oh, is that too much or is that not enough? I'll give you an example. Studies have done this. I'm deep into this. Our Platinum Inner Circle members, um, we're going to run a contest over the next couple of weeks on posting on social media. If you want to know, and I'm pretty transparent, so this is, this is just a little tidbit for you. If you go into your Facebook profile right now and click Insights up at the top, you're going to actually see how many people you impact uh, or have seen your posts over the last 60 days, 90 days, or even a week. Here's the reality. You cannot post too much on social media. Gary Vee recommends, and I don't disagree with him at all, is we should literally be posting eight times a day on eight platforms. Eight times a day on eight platforms. 40 to 60 posts a day need to be going out because it's relevancy. It's relevancy. If you're, if you're selling a product or you're selling your services like you're selling a house or, or you're selling money um, because you're a loan officer or you're selling shoes because you run a shoe store, it's relevancy. In today's marketplace, we broker attention. We broker relevancy. So for example, and I, I shared this with our Inner Circle members, um, but this is the first thing that you can do. Let's say you're at an event um, you're you're at an event or you're on vacation or whatever. And you know how you upload and you say, hey, here are pictures from my vacation or here's what whatever. And you add like nine pictures to the post. Well, you are way better off for the Facebook algorithms and the LinkedIn algorithms and the algorithm side of it, even Instagram, instead of posting nine pictures in one post to post each of those pictures individually with a different caption you will have that post be seen by way more people, okay, in, to in totality. Remember, on social media, building your social network, we have to play to the algorithms. The algorithms run the, run the world. For those of you that are in e-commerce, it is incredibly important that you understand algorithms, okay? And that's one easy way to do it. I see people that'll post pictures, and they've got like nine pictures of their product, in one post. And I'm like, no, 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 let's break that apart. Let's do nine posts with one picture, like three or five minutes apart, and you'll be relevant to way more people. The algorithm will like you, uh, like Casey? you even more. Okay. Casey? Yeah. Also, you had mentioned about doing 12 words. So when you're posting, you guys, in social media, the algorithm shows you the algorithm. Okay, let me see how do I want to say this. 
We have to show the algorithm that we are valuable to the community. If we show that we are valuable to the community, then they unlock our content to more and more people. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example of the evolution. Um, in Facebook, we used to click like a post. And I used to run around and say, score your post, that counts as one post. But when you actually click like on somebody's post, in the eyes of Facebook, from the algorithm side of it, it does nothing. It's no longer relevant because it's so easy that everybody just does it. So, you know, if you click on like uh, or open up the like and there's like the heart, there's the praying hands, and there's some faces. If you click the heart or one of those other faces, now it actually counts towards that algorithm. OK, so that's one way you can add more juice to tell Facebook that you are a valuable member to that community. Well, when you leave a comment on somebody's post, OK, um, if you just say that's awesome, it's better than nothing. But the tipping point are 12 words. So if you leave a comment on somebody's post, try to leave it longer than 12 words. And we may get into some like really deep social media strategies here, but just know that if you want to become relevant, go to your influencers. We're going to talk a lot about influencers in a bit and leave comments on their posts and do it with 12 words or more. If you do it with 12 words or more, in the eyes of Facebook anyways, uh, everybody loves you. Okay. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, so next up, this is about taking action. We are all about taking action. And I don't want you to take any old action. I want you to be in committed action. Commitment is that you're actually going to do that, that we can count on you or you can count on you to get her done, right? So if you say, if you maybe make a list, like on the other side of my notebook, I always write committed action. So you might say in that committed action, uh, I'm going to send Casey a friend request. I'm going to comment on five posts with at least 12 words. But those commitments, those actions, that's what I want you to implement. And I want you to get it so that it's so close to you from your heart that we can count on you to take care of it, okay? And for some of you, if you're writing down your committed actions and then you go have a chat with Kay or Linda, they may say, hey, what are you committed to? What are your commitments to your action? Are you committed to getting your book finished? Are you committed to getting booked on a podcast? Are you committed to um, sending out 15 text messages? Are you committed to really adding some customers? Are you committed to showing up to training calls with your mastermind, right? Committed action is really the name of the game here, okay? So what we need to do before we do anything here, before we start this process, is we're gonna do a, a little bit of an exercise, okay? And this exercise is to understand before we do anything, oh, I should probably say this before we do this exercise. It is important to have some context for this, okay? So the way we're gonna do today is we're gonna start with some foundational stuff and then we're gonna build on it. So things to do before you go to an event, things to do at an event, things to do after an event, things to do within follow-up and all of that kind of jazz, okay? So before we do any of thing, I want to get to the fundamentals, a foundation. And this is going to be an exercise, okay? And so this exercise is going to give us some real basic understanding of where your business is. And I promise you, for some of you, this is going to be very, very enlightening, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with what your customer lifetime value is, the lifetime value of a customer. Okay, now I'm going to ask you to write the number down and I'm going to have you put it in chat and, and um, we're going to have, uh, I'll probably have Linda or uh, not Linda, I'll probably have Helen uh, read some of these out or Bruce read some of these out. But the way that we do this is the number of dollars per sale times the number of sales per month, okay, times the number or the number of transactions per year times the number of years that that person is going to be with you. Okay. Now I always get asked about real estate agents. So for you guys, take your average commission. Okay. Your average commission on a house, take that and go, Hey, that my customers buy for me once every three to four years, they're going to buy five houses with me over the next 10 years, 15 years. So you divide, take, take your commission times five times 15. Okay. If you are in um, any other business, I'm looking for the lifetime value of your customer. Okay, the lifetime value of your customer. Now, these numbers are going to be high. Okay, I want them to be high. I want you to understand this. 
really clearly. So go ahead and just take a second. And I'm going to have you just, just jot that down. If you need to do a little math, do a little math. Okay. And when you have your number, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to drop that. I'm going to ask you to drop that in the chat. David Cook, 25,000. Okay, Lynn's David, 25K. Awesome. Lynn, 10,000. Lynn, Barbara, 10. Sorry. Barbara, 75. Sally, 16,000. Sorry, that was 75,000 for Barbara. 16,000 okay. for Sally. Bill, is this, 20, is this our, is this our Sally? Yep. Okay, that's going to be way higher than that. That's 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 only one that's only one trust or two trusts. But Sally, we're going to get that number up. We'll say we'll say that for now. But okay, <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> sorry guys. I may I may know numbers. Sally's one of our amazing Platinum Inner Circle clients. So, um, Bill's got twenty three thousand. Okay, Bill is twenty three thousand. Ozar one point seven five million. Awesome. That's what I like to see. One point seven five mil slab. Um, Eugene twenty thousand. Sonia four hundred and eighty thousand. Sonia Kim, is four eighty. Yep, thousand. Um, Kim ten thousand. Jose thirty five thousand. Uh, Tracy fifteen thousand. Gwendolyn twenty five thousand. Sarah fifty thousand. Deborah, 100,000. Shari, 80,000. That's all I've got so far. Okay. Oh, awesome. hang on. So that let's... one just came in. Two more came in. Um, Stevie, 125,000. Okay. Laura, 1.35 million. Okay. And David, 20. I don't know if it's 20K or what. It's just got 20. Okay. So here's the thing. So first... I'm just going to make an observation. All of you that are under a hundred thousand on here, or if you're if your number's under a hundred thousand, then this is a real opportunity to open your minds uh, and grow, right? So when people ask, sort of, in, on when they interview me on podcasts, I get asked a lot, like, if you had to name your superpower, what would your superpower be? Um, one of my superpowers, I believe, is that I can take any business on this board and figure out three, four, five different revenue streams to help grow this number. Because a lot of times these numbers are not, um, they're not big enough. Like the 1.75 million, the 1.35, 125, 480, 100K, 80K, those numbers, those are in line, right? But even so, let's just, we'll put that aside for now. Here's my question to you. Even uh, this, all these numbers, 10K, 35K, 15K, 25K, I want you to ask yourself a question. If that one customer is, and by the way, this is even before referrals, right? So let me ask you a question. Are you showing up at that level of conversation? I want you to think about that for a second. Are you showing up like that number, right? Many of you are not showing up like this number. So are you showing up like it's a $480,000 conversation? Are you showing up like it's a $1.35 million conversation? Are you showing up like it's a $50,000 conversation, a $15,000 conversation, a $10,000 conversation? Are we showing up like it's an $80,000 or $100,000 conversation? Many of us are not. Many of us maybe look at, oh, well, they're only going to buy one $400 product or one $30 product, right? But the reality is that even if you go into it from a different context, and that context is, hey, this is the lifetime value of a customer, we show up differently. Okay, so here's what I'm going to ask you to do. What I'm going to ask you to do is take this number, whatever this number is, and I'm going to ask you to take that and put it in the upper right corner of your notes. And just put it up there, put it there, and just circle it. Highlight it, circle it, star it. Because throughout today and tomorrow, I want you to go back to that number and I want you to just ask yourself, how many more of those can I generate as a result of what we're learning here? Casey, we have a question in the chat. Okay. How do you calculate with MLM company or affiliates? Awesome. That's a great, that's a great question. So in network marketing, what I would do is I would basically take your top line, your front line, and I would use that. And then if you are making an additional revenue stream on 
affiliates or layers deep, I would maybe take that, what you're making now, and times it out times like per month and make it out for like three years. Okay, so if you've got a business already that's already doing that, then just calculate it from that perspective. Because you're going to have a bunch of leverage. The network marketing game is all about leverage. So upper, upper corner, I just want you to keep coming back to that. We're going to reference that. Also, when you call, when you have your call with Linda or Kay, I want you to be able to start with, that's my number. Okay? And that's a really good place to start. Okay? So this slide is the same slide we used before. Your network plus your database times leverage is more cash. So is it, it doesn't make sense. If we've got these numbers in your network, could we just add more of those to your network? If we know that out of your database, right, out of your database, you have X amount of people in your database and X amount of those people ultimately end up being customers, we can start to get down to a ratio where I say, okay, so let's just use, um, I don't know, let's use 80,000 as an example. If your number's 80,000, we can start to do backtracking and figure out what does it actually cost us in time, energy, and money, and resources to generate this 80,000. Once you know those ratios and those numbers, then it's just about moving forward and creating impact, right? It's about creating choice. Ultimately, that's what I want for you more than anything is just choice. When you say what success or any of this stuff, I just want to give you choice, okay? So before we take our break, I want to explain the VIP upgrade for you guys, okay? The VIP upgrade, it's a whopping 97 bucks, okay? Now, I, I was talking with, I think I was talking with Linda last night and I was telling her like, I go VIP at every event I do because I always know that there's a reason that they put the VIP package together. Okay, so we do not charge a bunch of money for VIP. We go 97 bucks, okay? So 97 bucks, you're gonna get the recordings of the event, okay? Now, Linda brings up a really good point. Linda and I were talking last night about these recordings, right? Because I was telling her last night I was watching a webinar and she said, well, you know, the reason why I do all the VIPs is because when I get the recordings, I can then go back and watch them in half the time. I just click two times and I get to listen to them really fast and I get to mark them up with my notes and match up where they get to learn something and where all the fluff is versus the stuff, the goods. So uh, you could do that as well with these recordings. You can just take it, double speed me. I'll sound like... That, and then I can't even wait to hear how that sounds on, on, the, on the recordings, right? Um you're also going to get a couple of extra things. You're going to get a couple of bonus sessions. On Tuesday and Wednesday, we're going to do two different bonus sessions. All of those will also be recorded. They will also be sent out to you. The first one is Technology Blueprint. Where, so Ryan's going to come on and show you how to build out a blueprint um, that will not be scary. Uh, and then we're going to talk about filling the funnel or filling your database, creating this network, the network on this N plus D. We're going to focus on these two things. Um, on the second session with me, and then how to add leverage. And we're going to talk about how you can put in place a process and a system to generate a big database that can get to know you, like you, trust you, so on and so forth, okay? Hey, so I thought I heard the question uh, about network marketing. And so here's how, and and just for some context, uh, I've built three network co marketing companies right. in my career. All three, I was in the top five income earners. Right. So I do understand, I do understand this game. So Stevie, I think you were the one asking the question. I look at all my top line, the people that I could bring in, whatever package they buy, if it's a $400 package or $500 package or whatever, and then I leverage out what, if I'm deep in the game, I would leverage out what each person is on average bringing in where the business is today. And then I would look to see what that person is worth over the course of five, probably five years or 10 years is what I, I would do on it. And, and the reason is because if there's some unknowns, right? There's unknowns on the leverage side, meaning other people can bring in other people and then you bring in a guy like me and it blows the whole thing up. But it also, we also have to recognize, and this is a, a very specific thing and a longer conversation is, I never brand the company first. I always brand myself first. So I'm in the business of Casey or I, you should be in the business of you I don't, and I and, and just I only want to address this for just a couple of seconds because it's really important from a network marketer direct sales standpoint. The company, and I get 
consulting gigs all the time. I consult for a bunch of companies behind closed doors. So I'm going to give you guys both sides of the story here. On one side, um, the companies, I sit on closed doors and I try to figure out how to have the field brand the company. Business cards, swag, putting it on the side of their vehicles, all of that jazz. Then I flip to the field side and I teach, don't do any of that crap because that's their branding. You are just a conduit, a vessel for a particular product, good, or service. So the value of your network and your database is more important than what the actual it is to the company. So I would actually make the argument in the case that if you're building a network marketing company correctly and building it properly, then if that company goes away, which by the way, 99% of them do over the course of time, and I recognize that your company is the very best in the world and it's never going to do this and da 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 you know, um, I remember sitting in on a meeting where a company sold coffee and they literally like the next day they were selling crypto training. Um, so people make changes all the time. The business of you, your network and your database is where the value is, okay? So if you are somebody in network marketing, like. I know that I have a list. We're going to talk about lists here in a second. A list of people that if I were to join a network marketing company, that I could pick up the phone and call and say, hey, join me right now. And they would. I know what the value of those relationships are. Okay? Yeah. Companies shut down all the time. So I built a company from 2008 to about 2020. I was there for 12 years. Um, it, I made a change and literally... Nobody really even knew I made the change because it was a similar it was a similar concept. It was just a different a different company name, and I just continued to carry on. No real no real no real change. Okay, so brand brand you the value of your network. So I get it. It's a little bit weird in the context of what's your lifetime value customer um, inside of here. Okay, so uh, let's jump on to before we ever go to an event, right? So we know what our lifetime value of a customer is. Okay, we know the lifetime value of that customer. So now we're going to set ourselves up to kind of put ourselves where those customers actually are. Okay, so in order to do that, what I'd like you to do is just take a notepad, uh, take in your notes, and I want you to jot down um, who is your ideal client. Okay, who is your ideal network? Okay, and I want you to think of this in the context of those numbers. So Think of the person that you thought of or that you did the math on for that number. And I want you to write down five things that, that make up these people, okay? Five things. Now, it may be they're all women. It may be they're all guys. It may be they're all over 40. It might be they're under 40. It might be they live in the state of Alabama. It might be that they all are bald. It might be them. Uh, they may all be of a certain religion. Um, they may be of a certain mindset, okay? But I want you to write down five, five traits that a group of them would have in common, okay? Okay, I want you to talk, chat, chat, chat that down. Now, here's the thing. You can go broader than just, just that number, but I want you to really think about who makes your ideal network up, okay? And so let's 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 um let me give you an example. I'm gonna I'm gonna have some of you share your five traits here in a second. Um, but let me give you kind of some results of what this looks like when you're intentional and on purpose. Okay. So I used to work in the Hollywood, uh, in in the Hollywood, in Hollywood, right? Uh, uh in the film business. And when I first moved here, I recognized that the people that made up my network were going to be the people that allowed me to get work. And so I went off on a quest to build a network of people that worked in the film business, okay? So that was who I tried to network with. I wanted to network with people that were already in the business. I wanted to network with the players and the people of influence. I wanted to network with the people that ran Hollywood. And I, I created this. I'm going to show you this. I actually dug this out, and I thought I would share it with you guys because it's it's kind of fun if you... um. It's kind of fun. Um, this is my notebook that I used um, when I was in Hollywood. Now, it does say sex shirts on it. That was another company I owned. But I built this network, and this is what it was built with. In the front of this, these were all crew pages, crew, um, crew sheets, and vendor lists of what each project we worked on, right? And then, um, and it was done by here. Like, here's an Adams Family movie I did. 
Fool's Gold was another one. Implicated, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Um, uh, Always Say Goodbye. Campfire Tales, which is another first movie I ever worked on. Then I had personal relationships here. Then I had business cards here. And ultimately, when I would walk into a... Um, when I walked into a, an interview because I was a young punk at the time, I'd walk in and I'd just slide this across the desk. And if Linda was the producer, I'd slide this across the desk and I would say, Linda, here's what you're hiring. I'm just the guy that can dial the phone. Okay. Because I recognize who made up, who made up my network at the time. Okay. Who made up the network at the time. So next up, I want you to write down those five traits Right, I knew that they either had to run a company, they had to have a, had to be in the film business, they needed to be somebody that could be in a position to hire me, or be in a position to know the people who would hire me. Okay, that was really critical for me. I wanted to know who knew the people who could hire me. Those are the people that I networked. Those vendors, I would go in on the weekends on the vendors like the camera houses, the dolly houses, the grip electric houses, production supply company houses. I would go in, I'd be like hey, teach me how all this stuff works. I get to know all the guys. I'd bring them cases of Corona. I get to know who they were, how they operated. And then when I would be interviewed, I'd say, oh, let's call the uh, Jim the president of Panavision, right? And uh, it allowed me to grow that network. So I want to take a moment, have you write down those five traits. And I would like for some of you to just share some of those five traits or throw them in, throw them in the chat there. So you can either just take yourself off, take yourself off mute and just let's let's get some of these down. Yeah. Uh, Tom Katamoto. Uh, one would be uh, ability to ability to pay or have a job is one. Uh, having a why, a why, a reason. Um, be coachable and committed to their own goals. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. What else? Let's say we've got uh we've got somebody to put women, women, Christian, Christian, we independent, independent thinker. Okay. So, okay. So I see some of these coming through here. This is this is awesome. Be careful because I'm gonna ask you to figure out where these people are, right? So when I just see somebody that says, uh, looking to expand their net worth. I don't know if that's a personality trait or something that we can like glob onto, right? Do do we know like a hundred thousand dollars or more? Yeah, that's e that's easy. Men, women, that's easy. Ready, willing, and able. Okay, to what? Right. I want to get you guys like really clear and on purpose. Okay. So great. Deborah says new home buyer. So Deborah, for you in the new home buyer, how how long have they owned that home? Is it within the first six months? Great to buy. Well, I'm guessing that says or sell a home. Okay, so where do we know? Where do we know who who? Where do we find these guys? That's sort of the next question. Philip says real estate investor in multifamily units. Awesome. So Philip, for you, do they already have units or do they want to invest in units? Two very different people. Are they a pre-investor so they, they just don't have a multifamily project already? Or do they already have multifamily projects already? Right? So, and I'm a perfect example. So this is this is a great one. So I'm part of several syndications that are in multifamily. So do I qualify? Even though I may not own them outright, I may not be the active investor, I'm the passive investor. Okay. Marva says single mom, teen mom, want to secure their financial future, working moms, children. Uh, in middle uh, working moms, children in middle or high school. Okay, awesome. So, um, so Marva, for you, it's single moms, teen moms. Okay, maybe they've got some financial struggles, uh, and they've got children that are in middle to high school. Okay, uh, let's see. I want to read some of these because these are good. Okay, men and women between the ages of thirty and forty who are making good money. Okay. So, Michael, for you, one thing that you might say is um, who are making 90000 or more, right? Because your de definition of good money may not be the same definition of good money for them. Somebody that's making a million dollars a year may not think that 90, 90 grand is good money, okay? Who have assets, 
such as rental properties, okay, other assets to incorporate into their wealth building system. Okay, cool. Um, Kimberly says, influencer that has an audience. Okay, so Kimberly, what does that mean? Sorry, I've got some of my eye, guys. Uh, what does that mean, an influencer that has an audience? I want to know, define influencer and define audience, right? So um, is a preacher in a church that has a congregation of 10 people, is that an influence with an audience? Maybe. I want us to get specific with these, okay? Loves personal development uh, to collaborate, okay? Remember, I want to look at who your current clients are and take those top five traits. Someone who wants to leave uh, to leave their job. Okay, so Tracy, so the ideal client for you, the trait is they have a job, right? So Tracy, for you, for at least what you said here is they have a W-2 job, okay? Now, Tracy... If I remember right, you're in a network marketing deal. Um, so I might want to adjust that because if you tell me you're only looking for people that have W-2 jobs, you got a lot of education to do. Wouldn't it be easier to go find somebody that's looking for a company that already has been down the road, that's already tried network marketing, and for whatever reason, they're unhappy with their company. Maybe they started selling crypto training and then yesterday they sold coffee, or maybe their company just closed down, or maybe their company, they just want to diversify. But somebody that wants to leave their job means somebody that has a W two job, and that might be, and that might be, that might be. That's a perfectly good one. I just want to expand, expand it. Okay. Uh, so, so Nathan says a busy thirty to thirty five year old man with a drive to make more money and are good at what they do. What are they good at? I'm, uh, I'm good at watching webinars. I wish I was between thirty and thirty five, um, and define busy. Right. So this is really this is really important. You guys remember, we're going back to that number that we had on there. What makes these people up? I need you to also remove your opinions and be very um, specific and intentional in what you're saying. Busy to me means something very different than busy means to Bruce. Right. For Bruce, busy might be he's got something to do, you know, three hours a day. For me, busy means I don't sleep, right? Busy doing what? Busy playing tennis, surfing, right? So I want to, I want you guys to get super specific on this. Okay, I'm looking to niche new. I'm looking to niche new multifamily investors since it's so hard to get financial backing. Okay, so again, I'm coming back to if you're looking to niche new multifamily investors. Since it's hard to get financial backing, for some multifamily investors, it's not difficult to get fun funding. I have several clients that I work with that they have more money than they have deals, right? So again, we're, we're, I don't want you to put traits on somebody else. I want it to just be very specific, okay? So Sonia says, Sonia says, um, uh, Sonia says, Grandparents, awesome. Parents, aunts and uncles. Okay, great. Uh, grandparents, do we know, do they live somewhere? Are they in nursing homes and assisted livings? Are they living in an active lifestyle? Parents, what age? Okay, why, why? And if we can get to why parents are important or why aunts or uncles are important, we can start to dial this in. So I love this. Okay, F Fatima, uh, uh, I want a, I, I'm serving clients or people that want residual income. So here's the thing. I want the world to be made of blue cheese, right? So we need to define, do they already have a taste of residual income? Have they had residual income? How are we doing that residual income? Are we doing it through uh, lease options? Are we doing that through active in real estate? Are we doing passive real estate? Are we building a network marketing company? Are we building a direct sales company? Are we building an affiliate company? Right. When we say things like I want people that want um, residual income, I want it to be clear. Are you looking for people that already have residual income and they want more? Or are you looking for somebody that has a job that doesn't know anything about it and we don't even know if they actually know what it is? Okay. Sharon says, wants to learn about unconditional love, stuck somewhere, women 35, able to able to pay, feel misunderstood, committed to change. Okay. This is this is an interesting one. 
wants to learn about unconditional love. That means that somewhere there is a there is a woman that's writing, I want to learn about unconditional love. Is it easier to say they're in a shitty relationship or they're in a great relationship? Are they in an okay relationship? Maybe they're not in a relationship. Okay. Stuck. Are they C-suite employees and they're stuck trying to get a raise to the to the boardroom? Are they stuck in an employee role trying to become a manager? Are they a manager trying to, and they're stuck? Are they stuck emotionally? Are they stuck because of PTSD? Right. And here's here's the other thing. This is a, this is a this is a good one, Sharon. Um, committed to change. Here's here's how I always I might be off the track a little bit, but I think it's important. I'm not sure that a woman that's feeling stuck, okay, a woman that's over the age of 35 who wants unconditional love and is stuck, are they really committed to change yet? Or are they not in enough pain that they're not ready to make a change yet? So it's just food just food for thought, okay? Uh, Cynthia says, people who need a second income, okay, remember that need is different than want. So if they need a second income, are they lower on the socioeconomic scale? Are they poverty in, in poverty? Are they having a problem, okay? Single moms, college students, people uh, people who enjoy driving, restaurants who need meals delivered. Okay, good. Wellness professionals. I want to read that one. Wellness professionals, chiropractors. Okay, neuropaths. Okay, awesome. Awesome, that's Stevie. Fantastic. Okay, so Michael says, men and women between 30 and 40 making over 100K. Perfect. Okay, I like that. Um, okay. Somebody that's in pain and needs help now, somebody who is looking for business opportunities, someone who has financials to buy or invest in the business, okay? These are great. And what I love about this is that you're playing along. It's now time to get intentional. It's time to get like really focused here on, um, on what we're actually looking for because a lot of those things are gonna be very difficult for us to go look for, right? Looking for a woman who is stuck is a little challenging. Now, it can be done, right? And the way it would be done is by attracting those women to come talk to us, maybe through the use of a blog or videos or podcasts, whatever. But going out and building an intentional on-purpose network of women that are stuck might be challenging, right? If I look for, when, when somebody says they, they look for opportunities, well, how do, how how can we even start to navigate where those where those people are? Okay, so I'm trying to get you guys intentional and on purpose here because I want to make this really easy because as soon as we're done with this next piece, right, it's going to be like, okay, well, where do they hang out? Okay, so I'm going to introduce another concept to you right here that is um, really important. And that is what we call the KLTR list. Okay, the KLTR list is the no like trust and remember list okay so here's here's this is another little tiny exercise that we're going to do and i'm going to bring ryan up here in a second to share with you a little bit about a, a blueprint that we can start to lay out on this stuff but the kltr list is your ability to take right now and start to segment people that are in your phone, that are already in your network, people that are at your eWim event, your networking event, your BNI chapter, your chamber of commerce, your church, your community organization, your Save the Ocean, uh, Save the Ocean Foundation. And you're gonna start to make different lists. And this will come into play in just a, in, in a little bit why, but I'm gonna give you an example. So you wanna take your KLTR list and you can create a bunch of these guys. I just gave you a few options here, but if you were to write down who are your influencers, right? I think Kimberly said, I'm looking for influencers. Um, I can't remember the other piece that are into personal development or influencers with an audience. It's very difficult, by the way, to be an influencer without an audience, okay? So um, influencers, jot down all your influencers. Just make a list, influencers. Who are your dream clients? If you could right now in your phone, write down who are your dream clients, jot them down, right? I created a new, I have a new program. There are only five uh, five slots um, in this new program called Premium Platinum, right? Five slots. I wrote down a list of 13 names of my dream clients for that product, okay? 
Now, cool thing is, there are three out of five of them. There were 13 on that list. All three of them that are part of that part of that um, program right now were on that list because I just basically did exactly what we're going to do over the next day. Okay, who are your top prospects? Do you have a list of your prospects? And I don't mean women 35 or whatever. I'm talking about people that are in your phone. Let's just call it in your phone. Who are your top referral partners? So for those of you in network marketing, who are the people that are actually builders, right? Who are your top 100 clients? I, um, I'm, starting a, I'm starting a new podcast. And so I literally sat down and made a list, hand wrote it on a piece of paper, 72 names of people that I would want on my podcast. Gary V. I'm friends with Charlie Sheen. So I'll get Charlie, I'll get Charlie on there. Grant Cardone, Roland Frazier, Ryan Dice, Damon John, right? I've worked with a lot of the sharks from Shark Tank, right? And so I wrote this list of 72 names out. And then I went back and I asked myself, how many could I just get on the phone with one call and say, hey, would you come do my podcast? 68 of them. Okay. But I made the list out. You know, in network marketing, they do make a list, make a list, make a list. I say make several lists because you're going to talk to each of these lists very, very differently. Okay. So I want you to just continue throughout this. So you might on your notepad just say top, maybe it's top influencers and dream clients. Okay. And then just throughout the day today, if somebody pops into your mind, you're going to have an opportunity um, a little bit later. I think it's in the next session. Um, we're going to actually start doing some reach out. We're going to actually see if we can create some create some cool stuff here. Now, again, if you booked a call with Kay and Linda, you can bring these lists to that call and they'll help you kind of, uh, kind of hone them in or whatever. Um, these are really important, right? If, by the way, when I say 100 influencers and your top 100 influencers and you don't have a single person that you think of as an influence in your phone, I'm going to suggest that we start looking at where can we network with influencers because the influencers are the ones that have the audience, right? So this is why this stuff is so, so super, uh, so super important, okay? So influencers, really, really important. Our Platinum Inner Circle members, I think all of them have me in their phone. Most of them, when they need something and they need it broadcast or brought to a bigger audience, I can do that. We just had two of our members launch a book yesterday. Um, I was on the event yesterday. For those of you who are part of the visibility um, conference, we were down there. They hit best-selling author in like 12 categories in 10 minutes. It was absolutely awesome, right? But part of that is because they all dialed in all their influencers and said, hey, would you guys help go share it and uh, sp spread the message and help us sell some books? We all got on the phone. We all started selling books and uh, they hit it 12, 12 categories international. Like I'm super, super proud of them. It was absolutely awesome. Okay, uh, Bruce, you can take me to the next slide. We're back to that same slide of this network plus this database times leverage. Now, it is important for you to recognize that we should be working on all three of these at all similar times. So in our network, remember, we've now talked about what is our client lifetime value, right? 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand, or whatever. Now I want you to look at your network. Who in this network can either get us to that point or is part of that group? Now we start to develop these lists. And these lists are rolling lists. They're going to change. Now, some of you are going, oh, well, I'll do that on my phone or I'll do that in Facebook or whatever. Pen to paper is going to be your best bet with this one. It just is, right? Um, database, really, really important. So once you understand who your network is, once you understand who your network is, or more importantly, who we want to attract into the network, we want to build an email list or a database based on this. Okay. So I hope I'm what I'm trying to get you to basically look at is go, okay, if if we're looking for for women that are 35, um, that are USA based, okay, and let's even say they're interested in real estate. Okay. I'm gonna make this kind of generic. They're into real estate right? Or here's another one, just because I know we've got a lot of e-commerce folks on here. Um, I want to work, I want to find people that have sold at least more than 10 K on e-commerce because I want to build a network of people that I can do joint ventures with partners with. 
or one of my lists might be um, people that have podcasts and we'll call it business podcast. Why? Because I either want to invite them on my show or I want to get on their show, right? Like one of my lists are people that have podcasts. I love doing other people's podcasts. I love it. I love getting introduced to their audience. I love seeing how I can add value to their group. So I love, I, like, it gets me so excited when somebody like honors me with an invitation to be on their podcast, right? So I'm building a list of building a database of people that have podcasts, okay? So once you understand that, now what you can do is you guys, we can create opportunities for people that match these characteristics to join us on an email list or on a database, okay? And once you understand that once that database is set, it's like printing money, it's crazy. A little bit later, you're gonna hear from Debbie Morrow who started her Facebook group with her and her mother. And she's gonna give you her exact numbers this afternoon, but there's over 170,000 real estate agents in that Facebook group. It was like 18 months ago, right? She's gonna tell you how her email list went from zero to, I don't even know what she has. She'll give you the exact number, um, a lot, right? Once she's got this dialed in, now we can put a database and she's just running a process, a system, an email blueprint, if you will, to bring those people closer to wanting to do business with her, okay? So for those of you, for example, that are building network marketing businesses, if you figure out um, who your builders are and who your customers are, and then you attract those people onto your email list because they're not going to be ready the first time they hear from you. Then you drip on them or share with them content or share with them goodness or do invitations through email, text message, all these other platforms. Some of them are going to ultimately raise their hand and say yes. Okay. So I've asked Ryan if he would come on and just talk for just, he's only going to spend like 10 or so minutes with you, but let me talk to you, Ryan. So I hope you're ready. Um, here are a couple of things you're going to need in order to kind of put this technology piece together. You're going to need the opt-in page. Okay. You're going to need an opt-in page. You're going to need a sales page. You're going to need an email, uh, an email nurture sequence. You're going to need a calendar, a calendar booking. So somebody can actually register a call with you and, um, a text strategy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, uh, Ryan come up. So Ryan, I'm going to ask you to take it from here. Spend just, I don't know, five, 10 minutes and going through just how to take, once we have that group set and dialed in, what do we do with them then? What are our options? Ab absolutely. Um, hello, everyone. Glad to be here. Glad to see everyone here. And um, this is something that I just like live and breathe and bleed and have been for the last you know 15 years doing this so this is something i just uh get super excited about but it's really really important to um grasp hold of this and i'm, I'm going to do my best job to really keep it simple right just just keep it really um component of knowing these components and understanding how they're kind of working we are having a, a VIP session that we're going to go through a full on blueprint and really do a deep dive. So if you're a VIP um, upgrade, you're going to have access to that bonus session. Definitely um, be there and we're going to be able to really go in deep uh, conversation about this. But this right here, uh, the slide that you're looking at, um, and what I'm going to talk about really quick is just a sales generation system. So Casey just talked about your customer lifetime value. One, identifying who is kind of your ideal audience, who is going to appreciate your message and take your message and say, hey, this is something that uh, is value to me. And maybe I need to do business with this person. Right. So you're identifying that. Now, how do you get them into your database and actually to be a buying customer? That's what we're going to talk about. And a sales generation system, really, when I look at that, and when I'm building that for customers, there's five components that I need in a sales generation system. Like Case just said, an opt-in page, which is a lead magnet, uh, a sales page for them to actually purchase from me, an email nurturing sequence where we have this automatic 
emails going out. I'm not having to one off these things to every person that gets an actual email. This is something systematic that is already in place that every single uh, lead gets an appointment booking online an online appointment booking mechanism and a text system. So uh, these are the kind of the components that I need in a sales generation system to make all of this work for me and really leverage my time. Uh, Bruce, can you take me to the next slide? So as a new lead, um, somebody that is just coming to you or seeing you for the first time, maybe this is kind of what they go through. Okay, this is what they are going through. And they come to an opt-in page. That opt-in page is just giving them the ability to get something of value from you, whether that's a PDF guide, whether that's a, a series of um, video instructions on how to do something. Maybe, you know, this is just an opt-in. We've all done these things before. It's, hey, if you want this, put in your name and number and email and you get this, right? So from that point, they hit your database. But from that point, a lead will opt in and then they go to somewhere else. What is that? That's a thank you page. So that's what we call kind of this thank you call to action page. Now that thank you call to action page is telling them, hey, you just are opted in for this free thing. We're sending that to you, but you may be really interested in this. OK, and that then could be book an appointment with me. Maybe the uh, appointment is a, a webinar, whatever best suits your strategy. But this is what, like I said, this is what the lead is seeing. So then they go book the appointment, go to the webinar from that component. That's when they are that actual sale is taking place. The presentation of your business product, good or service. That's where that they consume what's being sold, and then they can make the buying decision. So this, like I said, this little overview is what the lead goes through. Bruce, next slide. Um, and I have some some folks that are just like landing page. What I don't. So again, the bonus session. We're going to really, really deep dive in this, but a lead magnet opt-in page is just something very, very simple. It's not. Um, complicated to understand or grasp what is being sold or being uh, what is being asked. It, it should be very one-minded as far as, hey, if you want this, this can help you put in your email. <laughs> like there's a form, um, video is great, but it usually an opt-in page, a lead magnet page is just consists of a good headline, maybe a video and a form. Next page. And then from the opt-in page, we go to thank you call to action page, okay? The thank you call to action page is saying, hey, you just opted in for this, uh, for this actual guide or whatever we gave, but let me ask you, do you really want to take this to the next level? Do you want to, um, for me to really support you in this business? give them the option to actually book a call right then and there. This is important. We're asking the lead from they've opted in. So we've already identified they're an audience for your product, good or service. So we take them when they're hot and ready. As soon as they're taking action, we put them right into kind of the sales process. And this is where it starts. Opt-in is just saying, we're looking for people to raise their hand. We take them now to a thank you page. They've opted in. Now we're seeing how ready are you? If you're ready, let's book a call. Let's take the next step. Let's get onto a webinar or something of that nature. That's where we're really looking at the thank you call to action page to do. Uh, next, next slide. And bird's eye view, this is kind of the, the blueprint of a business, what you're really building. So this is kind of the back end of what we look at, what we're trying to design and not what we're trying to design, what we do design. And this is important to have prior to going to a networking event or prior to jumping on to a, a, 
um, a networking either online or offline, because this allows you to have infrastructure set up where you are, you have all this stuff already designed to what build your data, get people on your email list, build your database, allows you to network, allows you to follow up accordingly and gets them into the opportunity. So you can have the, the chance to have the presentation or partnership or whatever you need it to be. But this right here is what we're trying to do. And if you look to the very far right of the slide, it's all points to <laughs> one, one motive here. Okay, we're in business to turn profit. All, everything is leading to that. So we need to figure out a system and have systems and processes in place to support everybody that hits our database, right? Everyone that hits our database, how do we support them to get to where we're trying to get them to go, right? In this, um, in this blueprint, we need right before somebody can make a buying decision, they need to book an appointment. So they hit our database, we give them something free, we take them to a thank you page. Hey, awesome, you're getting this free thing. Do you wanna schedule an appointment? Maybe they don't schedule an appointment there, but guess what happens? They're gonna get emails going out to them in sequence. Hey, you did look at this, maybe you wanna book an appointment. Hey, I did a video on this, next couple days out, I did a video on this, you might have seen it of value. And then that video also points them to appointment. Everything points to the appointment because that has to happen right before the sale. So again, during our bonus session, we're going to really take each one of these components. We're going to uh, speak individually about each one of them. And we're going to design these blueprints for a, a business, we can do that for your business, but this is really the infrastructure we want in place prior to going into a, an event, going, being a podcast uh, a guest, talking to an audience. And this is how the big boys play and big boys and girls play because they know if you're going to spend the time to go, you're gonna take the most valuable asset, your time and energy, to go into networking, you need a system and process in place that will support that time and to every single person that hits your database. Otherwise, you get the holes. What's the hardest thing? We don't follow up. Have a system that follows up for you, getting people to the place and the opportunity for you to make um, your presentations or whatever strategy that you need. Um, but this is uh, something that really does help um, every business that I've really came encounter, it's some type of form of this type of, uh, infrastructure needing put in place. And it is fairly easy, kind of looks a little scary, but I promise a lot of us do this. Just some of us do it really manually <laughs> and we skip some steps, but, um, uh, once you figure out some of the easy ways to do it, uh, it, it, it just becomes a system that just happens. And you don't have to think. We don't have to think and put the energy into it. It just, it does it for us. So there we go. Yeah, awesome, Ryan. And this is, you guys, this is this is just one little blueprint, right? So let me give you like some examples of how Ryan builds out ours, right? Many of you um, downloaded a, a lead magnet called Power Networking Tips, right? So we said, hey, who wants, a, who wants 120 free networking tips? You went and clicked in there, that was a call to action. Download this. Your thank you page was, hey, we're doing an event. Would you like to come to Networking Riches? Okay, the thank you page on Networking Riches says, hey, if you uh, if this is cool and you opted in for Networking Riches, we'd like you to buy VIP. Many of you said, no, we don't wanna buy VIP. Then we said, okay, our next thing is, um, next thing is uh, go to our Facebook group, right? So we were, we, it's all that architect uh, of that. Many of you uh, went straight to Networking Riches and then it took you right to our Facebook page, right? So there's a bunch of different things here. So I'm gonna answer some questions. How do you attach two different things to the call to action? Is that having two different calls to action buttons? No, there's only one. So Cynthia, I know what you're asking. You either have drivers or you have restaurants. I would be marketing to them differently, okay? Now, 
If you if you were um, now, I have seen it done this way. Let's say where you were doing a weight loss product, right? Could we agree that men and women um, utilize different tactics and strategies in weight loss? So maybe you say, hey, we're going to help you release a bunch of weight back to the universe. Are you a man or a woman? Right? Um, then we have different architects, uh, different structures based on based on that. Okay. And, and that's usually but, happening in on the opt-in page. So the very first, the opt-in page is going towards the, the that person. So if you have one type of person in your business, you're looking to opt that person in, and then your thank you page is supporting that person. If you're looking for another type of audience, your opt-in page is looking to uh, to support them. Absolutely. And you guys, those of you that are VIP, when you're VIP, we're going to have Ryan go deep into this. He does the whole session. Um, um, okay. Casey, yeah. Casey, I have a question. Now we have to go, we have to put our restaurants, uh, we have to put our restaurants and drivers in our website to pay. We can't have them pay in for the subscription in the app no longer because Apple wants 30%. Okay. Okay. And so that's why I was asking how to, you know, because they have separate contracts, the restaurants. Yeah, so you just and, have them go to your landing page first, then take them over to your website to pay. Okay. When they, okay. when, when they, when they're on the app, once they download the app, say, Hey, click here to get started, click here. And it takes them back out of the app onto your website. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, awesome. Sherry says, uh, I don't know if it's Sherry or Shari. I'll say it's Sherry. Um, if I mess that up, please, uh, please correct me. Um, uh, how do you filter out those who can't afford your service from booking calls? This is a great question. This is a great question. So what I would do is I would put them in a Facebook group or a community first. I'd ask them a bunch of questions, get to know them, and then invite them for a call. So, but what you could do is ask a question on the landing page, and then the thank you page says, hey, take this quick survey to see how we can best help you. And then you say, are you making under 50 grand, 50 grand to 90 grand, 90 grand to 180, blah, 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 based on how they answer, then it takes them to either a, hey, join us on our Facebook page. We're super excited to work with you. Or if you could put them through some questions, hey, I want to book a call with you, right? So if you were looking for investors um, that are in multifamily real estate, I, for example, you could say, hey, I'm currently got money looking for a deal. I'm just kicking the tires, whatever. And based on how they answer, then it puts them in a different sequence. That's a great question. Okay. I'm going to skip Linda's answer because I know she answered properly. Yes, Debbie's Facebook group. Uh, we'll get you her Facebook group. We'll have her talk about it afterwards. Perfect. Yeah. Ryan does all of ours. We run a digital marketing agency. We do all of this stuff. Um, we do all of this stuff. Um, uh, uh, together with our Platinum Inner Circle clients. And by the way, our Platinum Inner Circle clients, they're all smiling right now because basically Ryan builds them that um, as part of them being a part of uh, uh, part of it, okay? If you're not techie, how would you do this? I think I saw that somewhere. Hire it out. I don't know how to do anything Ryan knows how to do, right? Because here's the thing. I go back to what's the number that you wrote on your, your top of your paper, 80,000, 100,000? Figure it out like hire a grandkid, hire us, hire somebody else to do it. Um, you know, go get a MailChimp account, go, go, but you have to do this because here's the problem. If you don't, you have no, you have no leverage. Once you have no leverage, you're competing with people that have leverage, right? So you could go to Fiverr. Um, it's, it's easy. I'm going to recommend hiring Ryan because I think he's the best in the world and he's figured this out and it's super easy. And those of you that are on VIP, you're going to see the first session where you can literally sketch it out, print it out, and take it to your tech team and say, just implement this, right? But here's what's happening. Bunches of people are going to go, oh my God, that's too much. Or, oh, my company has a landing page. Or, oh, I just send people to my website. If your website is not designed specifically to capture somebody's information and turn them into a lead, it is useless. You're sending traffic to websites that don't have any database building. There's no leverage there. Okay. I don't want to over pitch VIP, but Ryan is the best in the world at this. And he's doing the entire session. He's not getting off the phone until he answers every single one of your questions. He sketches it out. He goes into each of those very, very specifically. He's uh, amazing. I mean, he has built so many businesses and does so many different things inside a business. 
Uh, it's why he understands he understands better than anybody I've ever met the customer journey. Okay, the customer journey from hey, I'm just kind of out here having a problem. How do you solve my problem? And you walk me through that journey so I can become one of these people in your upper right corner. So uh, let's let's move on because this is this is I just want to set that aside for one second. Remember, this is about network and your database. So we're building your network, right? We're increasing that database, and then we're gonna add some leverage on it. That leverage is things like nurture sequence. That leverage is things like YouTube. That leverage is doing podcasts. That leverage is speaking in front of rooms, doing trade show things. I want you out of the audience of your networking events and out in front of people that can raise their hand and go, hey, I've got this problem. Help me solve it, right? And um, I can't remember, I think it was Sherry who put it in here. So incredibly important that don't be spending time on sales calls if those people are not ready to buy. But do nurture them until they're ready to have a call with you. And I understand if you're new or you're just getting started and you want to take calls with everybody, take calls with everybody, but go into it with purpose and intention. Because remember, I know I keep going back to this. I want the number in this upper left corner or upper right corner, your lifetime value of a customer. I want more of those. I want more of those. Okay, if, if all this did today was got you 10 more of those clients over the course of a year, is it worth a day and a half of you hanging out with us? Of course it is, right? At least that's, that's what I say. Okay, so next up, we got to find out like, where do these people hang out? We've identified the lifetime value of our client. We've identified um, what traits they have. We've identified them on our KLTR list, no like, trust, and remember list. Where do these people hang out? In the live world, in the on, you know, in the live world, are they hanging out at meetups? Are they hanging out at BNI? Are they hanging out at REN, which is the Women Real Estate Network? Are they at Team, Polkadot, eWomen, Chambers of Commerce, Rotary, Kiwanis, right? Are they in service organizations? I love meetup. I started my own uh, meetup group. I started a Facebook group for real estate investors. And right along with that, we started two different groups. We started a live networking event. And then we do an online networking event. 28 people showed up the first month. 13 people showed up the second month. The first networking event online we did, we had 40 investors. Deals are happening. We created that Facebook group of real estate investors. Once they're starting to, to work with each other, the deal starts going up. I'm the one that's sitting right in the center trying to like coordinate all of it because I'm looking to be the person that people bring deals to, right? I love doing deals with people. I buy businesses, I sell businesses, I invest in businesses, I consult them. So I want to be in the center of the action. I want you to be in the center of your action, right? Like I think I saw Jennifer O'Neill in here, right? Jennifer O'Neill is now kind of part of my community. I'm going to figure out how to do a deal with her, right? Ken does tax liens and tax sales. By the way, I, I thought I saw Ken on here. If you've ever thought about wanted to talk about tax liens and tax deeds. Ken is the best in the world at this stuff. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel, TikTok. He's he's like a mass educator, okay? Awesome. I just want you guys to figure out where your people are hanging out and then go there. In the online world, right? In the online world, what social media platforms are these people hanging out on? And this is really important. Remember, I'm asking the question, where are your clients hanging out? Not where do you hang out? So I put some social media stuff up on here. Are they hanging out on Facebook? Are they hanging out on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Clubhouse, TikTok, right? Where are they hanging out? And it is so incredibly important. And I talked about this again, for those of you that are with us from um, this past weekend at the e-commerce deal, I said this kind of same thing is, you got to go where your customers are. If you love Instagram, but your customers are on Facebook, you got to make a move. Either you got to move, or I think you got to change your customer base. If you're doing this in the context of all business, right? I love business. I breathe it. I live it. I, it's my hobby. It's my life. I love it, right? So I'm always looking for, where do my clients hang out, right? Right? I know what our Platinum Inner Circle looks like. I know the makeup of those amazing business owners. I know where they hang out. And I actually also know that there's an entire potential group of audience for me, a potential group of clients. 
I also know where they hang out, but because I don't, I'm not looking to attract them into the inner circle, I don't hang out there. My gig is not wearing a suit. Okay. So I am not going to go hang out where people wear suits, even though they might make really good clients of mine. The reality is for me and our community, we're a little bit more chill. We still are, we still mean business about business. We still create massive impact. We're intentional. We're on purpose. We're in committed action. But we also don't have to wear a suit in order to do that. I've put some, I've put some guiding principles together. Um, that I think just might help before you actually start going to events. I did a section for online events and live events. So here are my live event ones. Have your calendar with you. If you go into an if you go to a networking event, um, uh, yeah, Sherry, there are websites that have stats. Um, yes, or when you talk with Linda or Kay, um, they they might be able to help you as well. Here's one thing I'll tell you, and I, I was funny. I was actually talking with a client of mine, Sally. Uh, Sally talks about and sells Spendthrift Trust. She helps people literally um, legally um, defer or or not pay capital gains tax, right? And so we were talking one day and she was like, hey, I, my clients, I, I really want to work with business brokers. And I was like, okay, awesome. Um, where do they hang out? And she was like, well, I'm not really sure. And I da, 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 da. we went to Google and she wanted to work with business brokers in Georgia. I literally went and we Googled Association of Business Brokers in Georgia. And we went into the website and they literally, as a directory, gave us their name, their phone number, their email address, everything. So it might be just a case of having a different set of eyeballs look at who you're looking for and seeing what we can find on Google. Like a lot of our clients, I'm in Google a lot and play around with it because I'm I'm pretty good about figuring out what keywords, um, but you can find that stuff out pretty easily, right? If I was selling to restaurants, for example, I would be figuring out where the restaurant associations are. If you're selling to lawyers and lawyers and attorneys and CPAs and those types, I would be figuring out the bar association and I would go figure out the bar association. I wouldn't be hanging out in BNI. If I if I wanted to work with a bunch of brick and mortar businesses, uh, I'd be at BNI in like two seconds, right? So um, Sally says she's had 322 business brokers to her list in less than three weeks, right? That's only a hundred a week. I mean, what's taken so long? <laughs> right? I'm joking. But how many of you would love to add 322 perfect ideal leads to your database in under three weeks? Right? That's almost 15 a day. Okay? Not too, not too shabby, right? So you're going to have your calendar ready. You're going to have your camera ready on your phone. We'll talk about that. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. No perfume. When you go to a networking event, I know you think you're wearing perfume that makes you smell all sexy and makes you get your groove on and all of that. But what happens if your ideal client, the I saw 1.37 million as your, your number up here. You go up there and you start talking to a woman and you're wearing your sexy cologne. You got your Justin Bieber cologne going, right? And you rock up and she's the ideal client. She's ready to plunk down 1.35 million with you over the course of a lifetime. And you know what? Her ex-husband who used to beat her up also wore Justin Bieber's cologne. You're pretty much done, right? Ladies, same thing. You wear perfume because you think it's amazing. What happens if that's an ex-wife or an ex-girlfriend or an ex, uh, an ex or, or somebody's mom or somebody's grandma? You never know. So I'm trying to pull it back so you don't lose anybody. We keep the funnel as wide as possible, right? No pet hair. Anybody else allergic to animals? I am. My dad was a veterinarian. I grew up in a vet clinic. I'm definitely allergic to cats. Go get a lint roller, stick it in your car. I literally, I should have brought mine in here, but I carry a shave a shaver kit. Ladies, go get one of your bad purses or your old purses. Guys, go get a shaving kit. Drop some dental floss, breath mints, roll up, uh, you know, maybe a small steamer in there, baby wipes, uh, toothpaste or binaca. Oh God, binaca. I love binaca. Um, and a lint roller from a 99 cent store or Amazon, chuck it in there. And that way, if you have a problem before you go into an event, give yourself a lint roll. Um, no business cards. We're not at an event to sell anything. We're there to build connections. We want people to get on our KLTR list. Okay. Freshen your breath, wash your car, right? Um, if my car's dirty, I literally park three blocks away, right? If, if, because how you show up, which I think is literally going to be in two slides, it's going to say how you show up is how you show up, right? But at the end of the day, how you show up, if your car is messy and junk filled 
and people walk by and see you get out of that car, it is going to have an impact, right? And I want you to be at the event, not selling, okay? If you're in the online world, in the Zoom world, I've got a different set for you. Have a professional background. I hate, hate um, digital backgrounds. They're distracting, they're irritating. Um, you go in and out and we've all seen them. They're, they're absolutely bonkers, right? Um, proper frame, right? You even heard me mention to Bruce, hey, make sure that we're not showing the camera, not showing the Zoom. Maybe at lunch, I'll show you. But if I flip this camera around, um, Bruce, let's do this just to show people. Um, and Dan tells us, Dan says this all the time. If you go like this with your fingers, you make guns, you go like this, show people what you what's in this box is all they need to see. They don't need to see everything else. What you guys can't see, well, well, okay. So just Bruce, just quickly, let's do this. While I grab my cup of coffee off my stool. Okay, over here, we've got a red chair, red chair that I've hidden under crates with a black case because we needed a color pop. There's lights all around me. I'm wearing shorts. But look, this is all you see. And Bruce can frame it up. Boom. We've got the back walls lit. It's all about what you what you see. So have a professional background. Okay? What do we got next? Proper framing. Check display names. Check the display names to make sure that your name is spelled right, that the picture is right. Right? The Zoom mullet. I'm running the Zoom mullet right now. It's business on top, party on the bottom. <laughs> okay, that's our Zoom mullet. Our Platinum Inner Circle members hear me say that all the time. It's, it's you don't have, if you want to wear yoga pants or nothing at all, um, I don't advise wearing nothing at all because you never know. Um, one time we had, uh, I had a lady that um, decided she was going to change a lamp light bulb, wasn't wearing a top. We saw that. Um, I was one time watching where I saw a guy smoking a bong, uh, saw that. Saw one guy walking around where his roommate uh, or his husband was walking around behind him naked. Um, saw that. So be prepared that uh, just frame it up. Just frame it up. Okay. Um, when the host says, hey, you can drop your information, be prepared to drop your information if they ask you. If they don't ask you, don't do it. It just sounds like you're putting a, a, a for sale sign in somebody else's lawn. Okay. Make sure you've got good sound, lighting, and camera. Avoid fidgeting, flicking, eating. Like, ladies, we don't need you to pick your hair and do all, guys, same thing, picking your hair, picking your teeth when you're on camera. We see that, right? And again, no selling, no selling. Because how you show up is how you show up. Remember, we went back to what is that number up on your upper right-hand screen? If you've got a hundred thousand um, dollar, if you've got a hundred thousand dollar conversation and you show up like your fifteen dollar conversation, don't be surprised when somebody that shows up that's a little better put together walks in and uh, and takes that client. It's so incredibly important. Okay, so um, so I want to just I want to let you guys in on those something before we before we rock. So this is going to be what we're going to do at the event, right? So um, I just saw a message that was intended for me privately. They got sent around in our team chat. And what was really interesting is um, how our funnel, that's a scary word for a lot of people, I get it, um, works. So if you were at last weekend's event, and I know I keep referencing last weekend's event just because it's fresh on my mind, right? I was at an event I spoke at yesterday and the day before um, and the day before that. So this was a, this was a busy week. But when we take you to Networking Riches to have you register for this page, it just says register, name and email address and phone number. And we make phone number optional. If you didn't put our phone number in, you, your phone number in, you didn't get a text message from us. If you put your phone number in, you got a text message yesterday. You also got one this morning. You got a bunch of emails reminding you about this. We then took you to another page and said, hey, upgrade to VIP for 97 bucks, right? So somebody sent me a message that says, hey, it charged me 97 bucks just to come to the event. It actually was the VIP upgrade. So I know who you are. Thank you. Um, and we will just make you VIP. So our team will mark you, mark you as VIP. Easy peasy. You were already marked VIP. You just didn't know it. Okay. Let's rock on a little bit. So now we have figured out, let's just review what we've done. We know our lifetime value of a customer. We know what traits these people are or what, what, where they, where, what makes them up. We talked about um, where do they hang out, right? 
we've got our database kind of architecture a little bit set. So let's like let's go to an event. Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's let's actually go and uh, have some have some fun at this event. So here are a couple of things that you can do um, for your own events. So I'm going to give you an example. Every Wednesday, I go to a real estate investor meetup group here in uh, here in LA. We have it at the Sizzler, right uh, out here in Van Nuys. I do this everything that I'm showing you guys. I've done here um, at this at this networking event from the beginning. Okay, so number one, arrive early. The doors open at eleven o'clock. Literally, I'm standing there nine times out of ten. I'm standing there before the door even opens. Like I'm waiting for them. Like like the old Mervin's commercial. Open, 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 open. Right. And number two, no drinking. This is really important. If you're going to go to a networking event, I understand having a glass of wine might loosen you up or having a beer might loosen you up. But at the end of the day, what happens if you're talking to a $1.5 million client, you maybe had a little too much to drink and you get a little chitty chatty, or maybe they get a little too chitty chatty, or maybe it's a $1 million customer or client conversation. You spent all this time getting to know them. And, um, you show up a little tipsy and they're trying to get sober or they've they've lost a son or a daughter or a friend or a nephew or a grandchild to drinking could be out like i'm just not willing to risk it i'm willing to just have a cocktail um not at events okay assess look around the room pay attention remember we're talking about being on purpose and intentional because of that number in the upper right corner right that number in the upper right corner drives everything right Keep an open stance. This is huge, right? So if you're at a networking event and everybody's standing over in this corner, don't stand like just with your back to everybody. Be the one on this side where you're open and you are inviting that energy into your space, okay? Audition people. This is very simple is you wanna be starting to talk to people and going through in your head and going, listen, is this somebody I wanna work with? Is if it's not somebody I wanna work with, do they have the audience that I wanna work with? If they don't, politely just move on. Remember, our job is at a networking event to build those relationships with people that are there to help us grow our business. That's on purpose and intentional, okay? Be the greeter. Helen is like the best example of this. Helen, um, we used to do this call and it was every morning, every every Monday through Friday, they would do this call with this company we were working with um, and, and nobody was welcoming people or anything like that. So she just showed up every morning Hey, good morning, good day. Kia ora, kia ora. Um, she's New Zealand, so we have to go. Kia ora. Uh, and she just became the greeter. She now has been hired by that company to do different projects. She's been given opportunities because she's just a greeter, right? At our Sizzler meeting, most of the time, I'm one of the goofs that's walking around. I'm shaking everybody's hand before we get there, before we start. Be the greeter. If you walk into an event and you're the one at the front of the door saying, hey, John, welcome. Hey, who do you want to meet? Who can I introduce you to? Hey, let me introduce you over here. Hey, let me introduce you over here. You being the greeter at an event, first off, no one's going to say no. Imagine a networking event where you're helping people get settled. You think the organizer is going to come up to you and go, you know what, John, we got it from here. Please don't help. Please don't help us make people feel important and welcome. Right? But here's what's awesome. When you do that, you've got, people's, you've got people shaking their hand. You've got people introducing themselves to you. You're put in that power grid, that, that, that place of authority, of influence, just by standing there and being cool and not being a weirdo, right? So when I'm at an event, I want you guys to think about being intentional of meeting five people. Once you've kind of met with these five people, you can kind of move on. Here's who, who, here's who you could be. The speaker, the organizers, investors, influencers, and the GSDers, okay? The GSDers, uh, that is the get shit done people. These are people that you just know are on it. They're always doing stuff. They're always donating to the raffle. They're being the greeter. They're just kind of the people that have got stuff going on. If there are influencers in the room, figure out who they are, go meet them. Investors, same thing. The organizers, here's why I love getting to know the organizers. Number one, if you are a speaker, they're the ones making the speaking decisions, right? They know who's cool. They know who's not cool. You want to be in the good graces. I'm a, I am a speaker by trade. I am half the time. I am out at cars helping the organizers like wheel in their books and wheel in their crates and get set up and help and do all that because they are the ones that have influence. Same with the speakers. I'll give you guys a secret, a secret hack. And I'll put this in air quotes. 
If you will do this, it's going to run you probably 30 or 40 bucks to do this, but you will get so much more out of it. So if you've got a speaker, an event coming up that you're going to go attend and you know the speaker ahead of time, which they all tell you, go on Amazon and find out if the speaker has a book, buy the book and buy three copies of the book. Walk into the event with those. Th Remember, we're intentional and we're on purpose because we're trying to attract what? The top right corner of our screen, right? Walk in with three copies of the speaker's book and go, hey, you know what? I would love to um, have you cop do three cop autograph three copies of the book. One to me, because I can't wait to read it. It's absolutely awesome. Number two, um, my top client, my best client, the client that I just know needs to read your book, her name is Debbie. So I'm going to have you enter it. Uh, autograph a book to her as well. And number three, I'm going to have uh, the organizers raffle one of, uh, one of your books off. And I'd just like to donate and have you autograph it to whoever wins inside here. Okay. I want you to think about what that does to you in the eyes of the speaker. Nobody's usually talking to events. I go and speak at a hundred events a year. Easy. Nobody really comes and talks to me ahead of time. But if somebody were to come up with my books or say, hey, Case, I know you're talking about Platinum Inner Circle. I know you're talking about this. How can I help promote that? It's kind of golden, right? And here's the best part. If you don't have the money, go buy the books. Have them autograph the books and make it just say, "Don't hey, don't put the name. I'm going to send this to one of my top clients. Just say, hey, have a great day. And then go sell the book on eBay and recoup some of your money, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, I'm just telling you from, from that perspective, if you show up that way, you look different than everybody else. Okay? You look different. And nine times out of 10, the speaker's actually going to mention that from the front of the room. You know why? Because in our minds, that person is a gsd -er, And in, that, in, in our minds, that's the influencer. That's the person who I'm actually trying to sell to in the room, which means I'm going to highlight them. <laughs> right? So that brings me um, to the next one. I'll give you an example just on this 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 five people slide. Um, Ivan Meisner, who uh, is the founder and creator of BNI, um, largest networking event uh, company in the world. They have chapters literally all over the planet. And he came to Los Angeles. He had a new book. And I had done my research ahead of time. I knew what book he was going to sell. And I knew that he had written an article on the Easter Rabbit and Santa Claus and how they make great networkers, right? He's teaching networking. So I showed up at the at the venue. And nobody's talking to this guy in the back of the room. So I march right up to him. I'm like, hey, Dr. Meisner, my name is Casey Everhart. I'm with this company. And hey, I just want to let you know, I read that article on Easter Rabbit and Santa Claus. And uh, I think it's hilarious. I know that you're going to sell more books. So is there anything that I can do to help you sell more books while we're here? He's like, oh my gosh, you read the article? That's great. He goes, actually, you know what would be helpful is in my Q&A, um, could you bring that article up? That'll kind of give me an easy segue. I'm like, awesome. I'm, I'm a softball. I'm a softball guy. I'll lay that up. So I literally like grabbed my chair. I walked straight to the front of the room. I didn't care. Somebody was like, oh, well, we don't have enough room at our table for you to have breakfast. I'm like, I'm not eating breakfast. I'm sitting here. I'm waiting for this cat to say Q&A, right? So Ivan Meiser gets done doing his, doing his presentation. He goes, does anybody have any questions? And I'm like, I do. He looks, he's looking for me. You guys recognize that he's told me he set me up. He's now looking for me. I raised my hand. And he's like, Casey, he called me by name. Right? He called me by name. I stood up. He goes, hey, you guys, this is Casey Eberhardt. He works with this particular company. He came up and he was talking to me. I really didn't even get my question out. And he just went on and on and on about how awesome I was. And I stood in front of 500 people at BNI that were there to givers gain, but they were all trying to sell to each other. I wasn't doing anything. And I just stood there like doing the Disney princess wave. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, clutch your pearls and blow a kiss. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, clutch your pearls and blow a kiss, right? This guy talked about me in front of a room of 500 people for almost his entire Q&A time. All because I went and just spent eight seconds seeing what this guy was going was gonna to sell and helped him sell more of it. Ultimately, what was so rad about that is he then later, years later, hired me as a consultant to help turn around a bunch of chapters in, in BNI. It was awesome. And it all started from me just having five seconds of Google time beforehand, right? 
you want me to really nerd out? I'll, 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 I'll nerd out even a little bit more. When I go have conversations with clients that I think are going to be like part of our premium platinum program or, or that I'm going to work on a consulting contract with, I literally have an entire dossier made up of that of that of that client. I used to run. I used to be a C, co CEO of a digital marketing agency back in the day. This is like 15 years ago, and we were working with billionaires. We worked with. Um, uh, I, I'm going to leave out his name, but we had a billionaire client, uh, um, customer, pro, a prospect of ours, and he owned a polo team. He owned a cowboy boot company called Lucasi Boots. Um, he owned a polo team. Uh, big, big player, right? Big, big player. And we showed up there and I had my team go and write a whole dossier on this. Well, it turns out completely randomly that he used to be part of a leverage buyout firm in the 80s called Hicks, Muse, and Tate, right? And he was one of the three of them. So what, what I did was I realized that in college, I had written a marketing paper on this guy. So I had my mom dig around in the attic to find my research paper. I showed up to the to the meeting. I didn't even tell our team this. I showed up to the meeting and I say, hey, I did a paper on you in college. I know all about you. And it was really funny. He was like, are you serious? And literally we joked about me writing a college paper. We didn't even really talk about the project until the very end. We already had the project. Why? I went that little extra step. I knew all about his polo team. I knew all about his farm and his ranch. He was really into thoroughbred horse racing. I knew all about this stuff because I just did a little bit of research ahead of time. You know why? Because he was one of my upper right corners, right? That's why our Platinum Inner Circle members do really, really well. I wouldn't want to go up and compete against any of them because we always keep this number in front of us. We want to go that extra mile. You know, how you show up is how you show up. Okay, how you show up is how you show up. Okay, so let's talk about when they say, hey, you're going to give your 30 second commercial. Here's what happens when most people do their 30 second commercial. Hey, my name's Casey and I'm going to do my elevator pitch and I'm going to try to sell you something. And you know who's listening? No one. Right. So here's my here's here's how I reposition it. I'll stand up and say, hey, my name is Casey Everhart. I'm so excited to be here this morning. But if you guys have not had a chance um, to meet Ryan Begley, Ryan Begley's in the room. He runs a digital marketing agency, Go Expand Now. It's absolutely awesome. He can help you do blueprints. He can help you create technology. He can help get this tech stuff off your plate. Ryan, stand up or raise your hand. Great, you guys. You guys go deserve to have a conversation with him. Uh, oh my gosh, my time's up. Thank you so much. And I sit back down. The pressure's off me to sell anything. All I'm doing is I've met these people ahead of time before the commercials ever start. I've picked the one I want to do business with, and that's who I highlight during my time because they're the only ones listening. Highlight the speaker. Oh my gosh, I've read all about this speaker ahead of time. She's absolutely phenomenal. Wait till she starts. I hope she starts talking about this and this and this because I've watched her videos. I've been on her blog. You guys, she's incredible. Oh my gosh, you guys. Hey, my name is Casey Everhart. I really am excited. What I really want to do is I really want to highlight Steve Love. Steve Love owns the Los Angeles RIA group here. And she is, and he has put together this. I want to just thank him for, for being here and doing and putting this amazing platform together for all of us come together as real estate investors. Think about what that does for the person listening. Right now, if you want to go, uh, if you want to, if you want to walk out and you're just like said, I better need some appointments. So like I need appointments today because I got to sell more stuff. Most people are like, come talk to me if you're blah, 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 blah. If you're broke and you're unemployed and you want to find residual income, come talk to me. If you're trying to lose money, try and come all that rigmarole. How about you go, hey, let me just ask you a question. Would your life be better if you were 30 pounds lighter? If so, raise your hand or just mentally raise your hand. Or hey, if your, your books were done um, April 1st and you never had to worry about taxes, raise your hand if that would be of use to you. Come up with the three pain points and say, hey, if your hand was raised three, uh, three out of three of my questions, then you deserve to come have a conversation with me before we leave the room. Either hand me your business card or catch me before you leave. I've got my phone. I've got my calendar. We'll get you booked on a call right today. That's how you, you know, like Bridget's on here, Bridget, Bridget, uh, Bridget Callahan, right? She takes people's slide decks and makes them actually sellable. 
Because if you're a speaker and you've got shitty slides, nobody's paying attention. She makes them from, from sketchy and not selly to really helping you, right? So she could stand up and say, hey, listen, do you have a slide deck? All of you that have your slide deck, awesome. Okay, how many of you know that if your slides were more professional, you would sell more? And how many of you know that your product selling more would give you more choice and freedom in your business and in your life? Raise your hand. If your hand was raised all three times, then before we leave here, you have to schedule a 30-minute conversation with me. Because if not, everybody else in this room with their hands raised all three times is going to do it. And you're the one that's going to be left out. And you're the one that's going to be selling with outdated slides. Your choice. That's how we go on purpose and with intention. Okay? So Stevie, she'll send you her calendar appointment. You should get on her calendar and go have a chat with her. Okay? So let's move on. Let's go to connectivity tips. Okay? So connectivity tips. Identify the potential lead, prospect, person for your KLTR, influencer. Identify them. You want to build rapport and then request for your contact information. Okay? So here's an easy way to do this. Okay? So um, uh, let's say you go and you find uh, an organizer or you find an influencer. You chitty chat with them. You build a little bit of rapport. Very easy. Here's you guys. This is so easy to do. Go. Hey, you know what? Um, I want to take. A, I want to take a selfie with us. We take a selfie. Then I say, "Great." Put your phone number in, and I hand my phone over. The person puts their phone number in. They're not going to kick my phone away. They put their phone number in, and then I send them a te the text message with the picture I just sent them. Right, and that picture says. Hey, Bruce, it was really great to meet you at the Kiwanis Club meeting in Sherman Oaks today. Um, I'm looking forward to figuring out more about how I can help you in your business. This is Casey Eberhardt. I put my name, how to spell it. I say where we met and I send them the picture. Here's why. Because when we do follow-up tomorrow, I'm then going to send a video text message later. I'm not going to be programmed in his phone. So when I send him a message later, I want him to have a reference point. Hey, where did I meet this guy? What were we wearing? Oh, I remember the visual because of his if, if it's um it's it's his picture. And he's told me how to spell his name, which means I can go look him up on social media if I need to, if I can't remember anything about it. That is how this works. This is on purpose and intention. Okay. So how many of these, if we just did this, we go to events. Remember, we are where our customers are now. So if you are selling to um, film and television folks, you got to go where they hang out. If you are selling to office people, you're going to want to hang out on LinkedIn. If you are selling to fitness clubs, go to the fitness chamber. There are associations, you guys, for everything. Much like I was working with Sally, Association of Business Brokers in L Atlanta, right? There are associations. There are real estate investor associations. There's a real estate agency. There's, there are homeowners associations. There are associations. Literally, just go Google. You'll find a lot of where your clients are. I want you to just be more focused on adding more clients, okay? So next slide if we can, Bruce. Okay, so now we're back to this KLTR list. Remember, we're always trying to add people to this list, right? I was telling Kay this yesterday when we, when we were on the phone, like I wanna, I'm rebooting my podcast. So I'm always adding who, who are the people I wanna add to my podcast? Right. And um, for our Planet Mirror Circle members, I'm going to share with you guys uh, a little bit later something that we came, Ryan and I came up with. I think you're going to, you're going to really super dig. Okay. But you're going to want to continuously add to these lists. Okay. Now we're going to do an exercise together. Um, but at the end of the day, with this exercise is going to be a little messy, but I, I'm going to do this exercise. We're going to do this exercise because I want you to see what the power of this exercise is, but we're going to use it after the today with our KLTR list. We won't do the KLTR list today, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to do an exercise together, and I'm going to show you how powerful five minutes a day can actually be for your business, okay? I'm going to show you how powerful five minutes can be for your business right now. We're going to do this together. Remember, how you show up is how you show up. I'm asking you to play with us. It's only a five-minute exercise. There are going to be some of you that go, I don't want to play. This is too hard or whatever. I get it. But then I do want your result at the end. Okay? 
So Bruce, let's do the next slide. And here's what we're going to do. And I will tell you this exercise, people love this exercise. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. We're going to put five minutes on the clock. I'm going to put five minutes on my clock. I want to show you what five minutes a day of just pure gratitude, connectivity, checking in on people actually can do and result in, in growing your business. Okay. Very, very important. So I would normally say do five minutes a day on one of your KLTR lists, but because we didn't spend a ton of time really diving in on those, we're going to just do it with anybody in your phone. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our phone. I'm going to ask you for five minutes to take out all distractions. I don't want you listening to me, your kids, your dog, your cat, the toilet, nothing. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just open up your phone, open up your phone, and you're going to text as many people as you can in five minutes. Here are the rules. No group texts. Okay, so don't go put, when I say group text, don't put 30 people on one text. If you have a group already set up, um, that's fine. But I don't want people getting like a whole list of people in the text thread. Okay, it's like sending an email with CC on everybody versus BCC. Okay, so you're going to text as many people as you possibly can in five minutes. You're going to get responses back. Ignore the responses for now. This is just about five minutes of pure on purpose, with intention, practice of sending out messages, okay? Now, if you wanna do it on Facebook or LinkedIn, that's fine as well. I prefer it on text messages because these people are already in your phone. So this is how I do it. I literally go like this um, and I just scroll it until I go, oh, here, then I go here. Hey, hope you're awesome, explanation point. How the hell are you, question mark? Smiley face, smiley face. Very simple. That was to an old business partner. Then I go back here. I just do it again. Stop here. Okay. Um, I want you to do that for five minutes. As many people as you can. Hey, I'm sitting in this workshop just thinking of you. Awesome. Hey, hope you're having a great day. If you want to copy and paste it and do it over and over and over again, great. If you want to personalize it, great. I'm not worried about any of that. What I'm really worried about is for five minutes, you play full out. Give me five minutes of just outbound connecting with people that are already in your phone. Okay. So I'm going to put five minutes on the clock. Okay. Five minutes on the clock. And then when we come back, I'm going to ask you to share with me how many you were able to get out. Okay. So with that, we're going to start now. Okay. Go as many people as you can. I'm super comfortable and in my element. Uh, I'm in my home. I'm in my home studio. So now you guys get to have some fun stuff behind you, which you don't see this right here. Uh, my favorite movie in the world is Wall Street. This is my favorite quote from Wall Street that's hanging on my wall. These are my two favorite, my artists. My favorite artist is a guy named Shag. You get those. So you get some cool stuff, uh, cool stuff in, uh, in the backdrop here. And we're going to roll with it. Okay. We're going to absolutely roll with it. So we're going to, we're going to pick up right where we left off. We were, it's great. We were only about five or so minutes away from, uh, uh, um, uh, five, five minutes away from going to lunch. We had one thing to do before we went to lunch. And so we're going to do it now. Um, we ended with the texting exercise. And so what I'd like to do is with the texting exercise, I would like to have you go back and count how many outbound text messages you did. OK, not how many out about uh, inbound you got, but how many outbound messages you texted when you have that number. OK, when you have that number, I'm going to have you put it in chat and in on the fly. We're going to have Helen write down the number that you did. And she's going to take 20 of you. So, Helen, I'm going to allow you um, to be able to write those down. I think Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Souza is on here. Uh, she probably had a ton of them. Yeah, so we need at least 20 of you to put down. If you didn't do any, just put zero, okay? But count out whatever you did and throw those and throw those up in the chat. Um, also, somebody on the team, um, uh, somebody on the team, uh, can you guys please make sure that Jeff Saxby, uh, Debbie Morrow, Laura, and I took care of, I took care of Robert Orfino, um, that they are with us in the next half hour, okay? So we're, so we're writing these down. Helen's going to give us the number here in just a second. 
She's and what Helen's doing is she's taking down the top 20, 20 of your uh, the top 20 responses. Okay. And the reason that we're going to do this is actually really kind of a cool, fun exercise. So Helen, do we have 20 of them? Have we counted them? So here's, here's what I would love is while she's adding those up, I would love for a couple of you to give me, uh, just take yourself off mute and give me what were a, a cool response that you got back. Did you get a response back? How did it make you feel? How did that exercise um, work out for you. Just take yourself off mute. And uh, I'd love to hear a couple of you because I know you've had enough time now to get some responses. Yeah, I would like to go, Casey. This is Fatima. Hey, Fatima, how are you? I'm good, yourself. <laughs> I am awesome. How did it go? So I, I sent uh, 107 out because I have a couple of group as well. Then I got seven response back so far. One is like, oh, I'm on vacation. I hope you're having a wonderful day too. Thank you for thinking about me. Then the other people say, hey, it's been a long time. How are you? You know, all kind of, you know, old folks, you know, so it's it's very cool. Awesome. Just took five minutes to remember people. Awesome. I love that. Sally. I don't know how the rumor started, but I left Phoenix. I, I had an argument with somebody in Phoenix. And I moved to North Carolina. Three people told me they thought I died in a car accident. I sent out 17 things. I'm like, no, I'm alive. Don't you see me on Facebook? And they're like, no, I don't follow you. So. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know how this rumor started. <laughs> Gwendolyn. Yes. Hello. Um, yeah, I got one from a particular one that really touched my heart uh, because we, me and my husband, we were a part of a walking group. But we had stopped because of pandemic. And so um, she said, I just was thinking about you the other day. And I remember stopping because she started walking again with her husband and some other group of people. Uh, and so she said, I just was thinking about you yesterday and remembered how you took pictures in this particular spot. Because I always take pictures. And so she just remembered me. And so she said, God bless you. Thank you for contacting me. So I, I awesome. felt good. I felt awesome. good. Awesome. Yeah. Helen, let's go. Let's pop over to you. Okay. So in that time frame, we got 739 text messages sent. Okay. Keep that number. Keep that number for one second. Do the times 12 as well. Um, I got that number too. Uh, Julie, what did we get as a response back? Okay. I got several responses. And the thing that I really loved about this that I just want to share with you is everybody is that it's so nice not to feel the stress and the pressure of having to push and sell something. It's just connecting with people. It's a fluid motion. It's like, you know, give and receive. It's a really nice energy that's being exchanged. And people are telling me about their new businesses, what they're up to. I'm like, well, that sounds exciting. I mean, the conversation started to get a little deeper, but it's fun to people. It's just really nice. So yeah, I like it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Laura. <clears throat> So I um, had several reach out and a couple of them are going to actually be in Colorado here in the next, within the next month. So we're already setting up timeframes and a couple of them are like friends from Kansas city that I haven't seen for a while. And then um, I was also able to learn that um, a couple of my friends, like their kids are getting ready to get married or one of them's getting ready to graduate college. So those are all things that I can keep in mind and add into my system so that I can recognize, like reach out to them and follow up with them. And just in a way of not selling, but just saying, Hey, you know, congratulations with Garrett's wedding, those types of things. And so, um, and out of those 15 responses over half of them, when well, I just got another response, but over half of them have asked for us to like get together and meet. So, um, that's really great too, to be able to catch up. Awesome. I want you to hear what she just said. They want to get together and meet. Are those business type conversations? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thomas, we'll go Thomas and then Philip, and then we'll we'll put a button on this one. Uh, yeah, I made about eight, eight texts uh, and I got one reply from a friend. And uh he had a he has a an auction going. Um uh, I knew he had an auction going and I, I asked, uh, how's your auction going? And I got reply, not going to be doing it until, uh, you know, the preview is like um, Tuesday and then Wednesday is the auction. So I, it was just uh, because I was talking to him and, I, and, and 
and uh, I remembered that and and just uh, wanted to uh, touch base with him. He, he's a business uh, client of mine. Thank you. Awesome. We love that. Philip. Yes, um, this is just a just a heads up. When you text people, you got to text them from the number that they kind of remember you from. So I text out 18 from a new number. So I got cursed out 16 times. Yeah. But um, the two that said, who is this? Once I told them, then there was a response. Of, so, you know, just they got to know the number of where it's coming from. Are they going to think it's a bill collector or something? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's good. It's, it's good. Good. It was good. Awesome. Peggy, I think you're off mute. I am off mute. Yeah, I I said out a whole lot, but I just wanted to say the one that was really special was I got a video text back. Awesome. You guys, this is, can you see how this is just, this is starting conversations, right? Business is a dance. It's a dance. And as you go through this, it is about the more and more conversations you have, the easier the conversations about business will flow, especially when they start from your heart, just reaching out and saying hi. So, Helen, you said we had 736 messages? 739. So, you guys, here's what we did. We took a random sample of 20 of you, okay? Some days you did a lot of text. Some days you did hardly any. It was in five minutes, right? Together as a group, we took 20 of us. We had 739 text messages. That is representative of 20 business days in a month. Monday through Friday, four days a week. If you spent five minutes a day over a course of a month, if you did what we did as a group, meaning it's possible, you would have started 739 messages. What does your business look like differently than it did today if you did this five minutes a day? Okay. Now, I, uh, I, I want to ask you this. What does your business look like if Helen gives us the number and we did it for a year? 8,868. 8868. I want you to think about business. What does your business look like? Five minutes a day, reaching out to people that were on your phone, that are getting in your phone from an influencer and customers and all those people in your phone. If you had five minutes a day, does your business look differently a year from now with 8,800 conversations started? What happens if you have your whole team on? Okay. What happens if you have your whole team, your whole staff? Right? We have a premium platinum client that we have his entire team doing this for five minutes every single day. It's massive. Okay. So Sherry says, I've done this kind of thing before and I'm challenged with what to say to get the conversation started. How about, hey, how's it going? Ask a question, they'll ask back. So do you have a list or a website with good conversation starters? Uh, there's an amazing site that will have this. This is really easy. This is probably a writer downer. Okay, this is huge. Okay, so this is a site that you can go to. It is a list of resources. Um, that is the world over. It's the best in the world. That okay? Are you guys ready? Here it is. G O O G L E dot com. Google if you're bougie. Google if you're not. Right. So go type in best conversation starters, and you'll get a gazillion of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's perfect. I know it seems. And I say that jokingly, but I'm also serious, you guys. Sometimes we try to make this business so hard and so overcomplicated. Sometimes it's just a matter of going and asking the right question, right? So here's what I'd love. When we come back later, um, when we come back later today, I want to know if you had any business conversations started, appointments get started, um, of all of that. Yeah, Sherry, a lot of us are. Uh, a lot of us do. I think it's one of, I, I would also say one of um, one of my superpowers is to take complex topics and actually make them really easy. Working with our Platinum Inner Circle clients, a lot of times um, my job is to uncomplicate what they've complicated in their head. Here's the thing. If part of your daily method of operation, your starting game point is you wake up in the morning, you sit down with your cup of coffee 
and you start to develop out your on purpose with intention, building your network mode, take out your phone for five minutes and text outbound messages. And then don't look at it for 20 minutes, a half hour. See what happens. See what can be created. Okay. It's massive. Okay. Now, so here's what's really cool. Did we talk a tiny bit about the breakthrough zones? I want to reintroduce the breakthrough zone. If we haven't talked about these breakthrough zones, you guys, the breakthrough zone. So the breakthrough zone is a really awesome opportunity. We're going to try to get to one or two today, and we're going to do a bunch of them tomorrow. And it's really a way for us to um, uh, work on your business. So just reach out to Ryan or Linda or Kay. And uh, they're going to kind of, if you have a, if we have a bunch of people, if you have a bunch of people uh, that are in the same profession, they may kind of figure out if you're ready or who's going to go what. I just need you to be coachable. I need you to be open with your numbers because we're going to break these down and we're going to really figure out what challenge we can do to help get you unstuck and move you throughout, uh, move you uh, forward in the business. Okay. So once you're done and you leave the session, you guys, what you're going to want to do is remember how we texted those people um, and we got them in our phone and we sent a picture with them. Now, when you're done with the done with the event and you go home, now what you can do is send them a video message, right? Peggy even said, I sent out a bunch of messages and I got a video message back. This is really cool. If you can then take your camera and do a quick video response back, now it's building that rapport, it's building that relationship and it's deepening that connection that you have with someone. It's really critically important that you grow these relationships deeper and deeper and deeper. And if somebody's on your KLTR list, that's where I would be spending some time, okay? So create a quick video. You can use Facebook Live, you can use Zoom, you can use YouTube. You can do a lot of things to create a video text message back, but also get them on camera or do a video response, do a video email, or do an, a video blog post, or do a Facebook Live and say, hey, I want to introduce you to my friend Amy. She's one of the ladies of justice. She's with this company called Prepaid Legal or Legal Shield, sorry. They provide health insurance type things with attorneys and cash with unlimited contact with, with um, a lot of lawyers and uh, what am I trying to say? Parker Stansbury is the, the thing we use here. Go check it out. Start using video to promote. Video is the number one way we start to feel connected to you without actually getting to you in a one-on-one -on -one environment, okay? So I hope that makes, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, somebody's saying here, any tip for somebody who doesn't like to share her face in video? Yeah, um, get over it. I know that's probably not what you want to hear, but Sony, here's the thing. Um, if, if people, people do business with people. So if you don't do business with people, maybe we don't have to, but if you're going to do outbound messages, you can do voices if you want. But at the end of the day, people want to do business with people um, that they know, like, and trust. And one of the easiest ways to build trust is to let them see your face, hear your tonality, that kind of thing, right? So one of the things I tell our Platinum Inner Circle members, they will all, they're all just kind of laughing behind because they know where this is going. Your first 50 are going to suck. <laughs> your first 50 are going to suck. But here's the great news. Most people won't do 50. So when I go back and I look and I say, hey, my ideal client, my ideal client is worth $100,000 or $200,000 or $1.1 million. And I go, okay, so my first 50 videos are going to suck. Each client I get is worth a million dollars. I'm going to figure that one out real quick. But there are also a bunch of other things that, uh, that you can do. And I'm going to talk about those actually in the next section, which is how to turn contacts into relationships. But I want to give away some cash first. Okay. I want to give away some cash. Okay. I still suck and don't care. Sally, uh, Sally thinks she sucks, but she's all over TikTok. She is, look at all of our Platinum Inner Circle members are like shaking their head like, what the heck are you talking about? She's everywhere. She might think she sucks. But we don't think she sucks. So the real question is, does she suck? Depends. Depends if you're her or us, <laughs> I suppose. Right? Okay. So we're going to move forward and really talk about 
um, how we turn contacts into relationships, okay? We're gonna talk about turning contacts into relationships. And this is one of those things that is so powerful. It's, we like to live in this domain in our Platinum Inner Circle. And our Platinum Inner Circle is our business coaching mastermind program. And so I keep referring to it. You guys see pick in front of a bunch of people's names. I've had two people private message me like, why do people have pick in front of their names? A bunch of them do. It stands for Platinum Inner Circle. Okay, so I'll just spell, <laughs> spell that myth as it is. So um, turning contacts into relationships. The relationships are where the opportunities land. Their relationships are where doors are opened, business gets done, invitations get sent, going behind the velvet rope. Um, that's where all of these relationships open up. And it's really fantastic when you understand the power of continuously building long-term relationships. Before we do this, I do want to, I do want to say one thing because I think this came up on an event I was at yesterday and the day before, and it was for a bunch of public speakers, right? And the promoter, my friend Danella, I think she'll be on, she's doing her event, so she might be on tomorrow with us a little bit. But I had said to this group of speakers, I'm like, the reason I get hired uh, to speak a lot is not because I'm a great speaker. I mean, it's not because I'm good looking. I mean, look at me, I've got a face for radio, <laughs> right? Um, but it's because I have relationships with the people that are doing the hiring. Okay. I have relationships with the people that are doing the hiring. I one time got a, a coaching. Uh, I, I got hired by this group of actors um, to coach them on getting booked more gigs in Hollywood. And when I started reaching out and figuring out what their biggest challenge was, the big challenge was their, their friend group and the people that were in their network were all other actors. And I said, let's go network and build relationships with people that can actually hire you. Guys like me, the line producers, the production managers, the producers, the casting directors, the directors. And once we started doing that and going through what this next session is all about, building those contacts and turning them into relationships, it's golden, right? I used to cast movies, and this is no joke, you guys. I wasn't even a casting director. I was a line producer, which is the money guy, right? I hired the crew, I hired the equipment, I ran the day-to-day -day production of the, of the movies. And a lot of times I cast movies out of my phone. My friends are all in my movies. Uh, the people we used to hire, almost all of them were in my phone. It was just the people that I had relationships with, okay? So let's talk about some ways that we can turn relationships in some contact and move them into relationships. Number one is we're gonna increase our influence and we're gonna build friendships, right? So a lot of this is really just taking, how did we meet somebody at an event and actually become friends with them, right? By the way, um, I meant to say this earlier, I was thinking about this on the drive home. I think Lois is on here. Um, Lois goes to my real estate meetup group that we meet at the Sizzler every Wednesday. And I have to just call her out because she, is somebody who is so cool about listening, learning, and putting into practice. Every time she gets up and introduces herself at the Sizzler meeting, she highlights somebody else that's already in the room. This last week when we knew Networking Riches was coming up, she literally like held up a flyer and promoted Networking Riches. It made me feel amazing and special. And so I just wanted to give her a highlight because she's awesome and you should know her. OK, she's a buy and hold investor out here in L.A. Um, and she is also uh, I want to say it's called Ladies of Justice. Amy, do I have that right? It's Ladies of Justice, right? I think it's called Ladies of Justice. But they um, they, they she works with with Legal Shield as well. They're awesome. They're awesome. OK. You want to do everything to make people feel important, do everything to make people feel important. That's why. When you are putting these people in your phone or you're meeting them at networking events, at the next networking event, be highlighting them, figuring out how to pass them referrals, all those kind of things to make them feel absolutely important. Give them private access, right? Give them private access. This is, this is one that people kind of make weird, um, and, but you can do it in a way that's not being a weirdo, right? My time pretty, pretty at a premium. So my time goes, my time is booked into buckets, right? The first bucket that has my attention anytime they need it are my premium platinum clients. 
There are three of them, okay? Next group are our Platinum Inner Circle members. There are a hundred of them, okay? They get me, we just have to make a little scheduling, but they have access to me, right? Friends or prospects or people that I don't work with or are not clients, they go into that third bucket, but I do still give them opportunities to have conversations, but my, the bulk of my time is working with clients. That's one of the reasons why people work with us, right? Same with you. You've got to make your time scarce. And so somebody was asking about like, how do you spend time not spending time doing appointments with people that can't afford you? The reality is spend time with the people that are investing in working with you. Okay. Names on a whiteboard. Okay. Names on a whiteboard. If I had my whiteboard here, I would show you, but it's down at the studio in front of me always is a group of people that are on my KLTR list that I want to work with me, right? Or that I want to work with. So you can, the other thing that you can do is uh, I have it on my, I've got passwords written up there, so I won't show you, but over right here, I have closet doors that are mirrors. Um, and I take dry erase markers and I write all over them. I write all my passwords. I write who I want to be working with. I write the people that are my dream clients. I write, I have a, a group because I am looking, um, uh, because I am looking to get booked on podcasts and stages and, and speaking events. I started a list of all the people I know that run podcasts or all the people that I know that run events or that have Facebook groups of people that I might want to work with because I want to be in front of those people. So write them on a whiteboard. You can do it in your mirror, um, in your bathroom, right on, write your top, your top people on a mirror in your bathroom, right? The visual representation, because then when you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. I look at that. And now I know somebody I can text and I go back to that text or I can write them an email. Pass referrals like crazy, right? We, I, have a, I have a premium platinum client named Shanta. She, is a, she runs group cruises. She's a travel professional. She does a ton of stuff. I happen to just know a lot of people that want to do group cruises. It's easy for me to pass referrals to her. Jeff Saxby, who I think you may hear from in a minute, um, passing lots of referrals over there. I want you guys to get in the habit of passing referrals, passing referrals. When you are promoting people that are not yet working with you, the more referrals you can pass them, the better off you are. Think about this. Let's say that I have Amy on my list of dream clients, and I know that I can pass Amy 50 referrals. If I pass Amy 50 referrals and she books five of them, one out of 10, I want her to I want you to think about what's her number up in the right side of her screen. She knows that number. Let's say it's 10,000 bucks, right? I pass 50 referrals to her and she books what I say, 10 of them. She books 10 of them at 10 grand. I just basically gave her $100,000 worth of business. If I gave her $100,000 worth of business, at some point if I ask her to come work with me and my price point is $20,000, is it worth it for her to come work with me for $20,000? If I pre-gave her $100,000 in business, when I go ask her to work with me for $20,000, it becomes almost a no-brainer, right? This is, really, um, this is really important when it comes time for, hang on a second, this, when it comes time for, who are, they, um, who are they working with, okay? Past referrals like crazy, create content they want. Okay, content they want. I know you want content about building networks. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Okay, so create content they want. And then what we want to be able to do is at minimum connect with them twice a month on your KLTR list, whether that's a physical touch or a non physical touch. And when I say physical touch, don't anybody get all weird on me, um, but I mean something that they can touch or feel right? I love bringing coffee to people. We'll talk about this a little bit more in the follow-up section tomorrow. Um, but one greeting cards, thank you cards, cookies, mugs, whatever it means, something in the physical world, and then maybe something online. Yeah. Brownies is a good example as well. Okay. Does this make sense so far, you guys? If you can see what we've done is we've really identified who our ideal client is, figured out who they look like, what they look like, what traits they have. Then we figured out where they are. Once we figured out where they are, we're going and hanging out there. 
We're trying to build some relationships with people. We're trying to ultimately getting them in our phone. Then we're trying to build them into friends. We're going to stay in touch with them, connect with them, give them referrals, bring them speaking gigs, go make them feel special. Do what you can to bring them into your network. Once they're in your network, now it's about taking them to the next step, either bringing them in to do business with you, bringing them in to do joint ventures, okay? Joint ventures is what we call JV. So Philip says, can you automate some of this? Yeah, of course. Of course you can. I love automation. I love automation. I use automated tools all the time. Email can be completely automated. Greeting cards and postcards can be automated. Gifts can be automated. Um, you could probably even use a texting program to send out automated texts. I know you can because you all got a text reminding you about today, right? That even had your name in it. We sent that out using a broadcast platform. So you could take your entire database and send a text message once a month that just says, hey, hope you're doing awesome. Or, hey, if you haven't booked your call yet, book a call. Or, hey, if you haven't, I, ha I am on a text message thread from someplace in Colorado Springs called The Summit, which is a bowling alley arcade. I get a message from them once a week of some special going on, right? Now, I would like it if they would send me a message once in a while. They just said, hey, thanks for being on our email list. But I know what's going on at The Summit. I don't even live in Colorado Springs. So I want you to think about it from, from that perspective, okay? Um, yeah, the more you can automate, the better. But also remember that once it gets to a certain level of relationship, you are going to have to actually have some kind of conversation with people. But it's a heck of a lot easier to have an automated database of 40,000 people and print money than it is going to the same networking event for nine years trying to sell a $49 product. Right. And so some people will get into the habit of like, oh, I got to go spend, I got to go build all these relationships. I'm going to go to eWomen and Polka Dot. And I'm going to spend nine years there before I ever ask for money, before I ever sell anything. Meanwhile, someone like Debbie Morrow puts them on an email list. He continuously invites them to a networking event or some promotion that she's running and gets them in um, and then gets them in the sequence so that when they're ready, they can raise their hand. I just spoke at her networking event on Thursday. There were six people whose comment was, I'm, this is my first time here. Um, I've been getting Debbie's emails for a while and I just finally decided to show up. Our meetup that we do for real estate, we send emails and text messages. They're just ready. Um, they're just ready to go when they're ready to go. Okay. Cool. So Jennifer will, we'll, oh, you, Jennifer, uh, yeah, you probably didn't get a, you didn't get a text message. Uh, you didn't get a text message because you're already part of our Platinum Inner Circle. So everybody that registered, we should actually do that, Ryan. Um, note to Ryan, see, this is how uh, we'll get you. Trust me, we'll get you. You guys want to be on our email list. I promise you, we will get you on our text reminder list. You do not have to tell us twice, right? So that's really kind of the gig. I want to get serious for a second. In all of this business stuff, you guys, People are one of two things. Well, wait, before we even do that, I want to open it up. Anybody have any questions? Anything you want to jump in with before I move on? Yes, yeah. no, maybe so. Yeah, Sally. True story. I was on a networking uh, meeting on Tuesday. I made an appointment with a lady who talked about doing, um, she helps authors get on New York Times list. We had a meeting yesterday. I'm telling her what I do. And she goes, let me send, let me introduce you to one of my friends. She goes nationwide talking to women real estate uh, investors. And she's like, you and I need to have a conversation. We're talking on this coming Tuesday. I didn't ask for the connection, but just because I was on a meet, you know, I, I, she, she put it in that she's looking to talk to people. You never know where the connection is going to come from. You could just be kind, just show up on time. And you don't know who the other people know. Yeah, it's, it's important. It's important. It's really, really important. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, Marcy Green from Sea Green Financial. If you guys need money, talk to Marcy. That's right. If your banker is mean, call Marcy Green. <laughs> I love it. I have a comment. Um, and I think it's very important. They'll respond when they are ready. 
Um, that's how I even came into uh, to listen to you. I kept getting your emails and getting the the emails years ago that you were you were having an event out in uh, one of the nearby hotels in the valley. And one day I said, I'm not doing anything on a Saturday. Why don't I just pick up and go? And that's when I uh, got there with uh, Maurice. He was heading the thing. And then you were speaking online. And I thought, oh, my gosh, he has all these things. And and uh, I wasn't ready I because there were so many things. I said, my God, I'm, I'm exhausted just listening to all the things he does. So um, I went to another one. And I went to another one, and then you had some more things. And um, I I came to your event where you uh, where a lot of people were crowded in. I came there about two three times, and finally I said it was somebody said, "Well, why don't you join?" Where he said, "Join." I said, "No, in the summer it's just a little too hot." And then finally I said, "I'm ready to join," and I'm so glad I did. So thank you for bringing up that point. Very important. Marcy, this is really awesome. So Marcy is part of our Platinum Inner Circle program. Um, Marcy, how many years have you been with me? I can't count them, but they, they, they've all been good years. So it's it's more than five, right? I think you're probably in the seven or eight. I don't remember. I want you guys to hear what she said, because this is so important as we as customers. Your prospects are the same way. She got on my email list. I basically harassed her. At some point, she was like, I got nothing to do. I'll jump in and listen to this Yahoo. She came and heard me talk. I was like, yeah, that Yahoo can go talk. I got it. I go meet some people and then I go home. And then I came to two or three. This is like, you guys heard it from her. I didn't prompt her. I came two or three more times until somebody said join. And then her response was, nah, I'm not really ready. He's too big of a yahoo. I don't trust him yet. It's too hot. It's this or that. It's this or that. It's this or that. Right? Um, and then finally, she was ready. She raised her hand. She said yes. And now she's been an amazing client for, let's even call it five years. But can you recognize that, that that relationship would not have happened if it, ultimately she hadn't been on my email list? Because I'm not going to call her physically every single time I'm doing something. I had her. She was in my database. She then became part of my network. She then became a client slash friend because she's a good friend as well. Right. And now we're like the best of buds. Right. This is how business happens. These are these relationships that are absolutely awesome. And her business is growing and she's getting results and she's like cranking it out. And here she is. Bada bada bing bada bang. So the one other thing I might, I'd like to add is I had an opportunity after the first or second time that I saw you on stage, um, after I left and you were leaving at the same time, and we just chit-chatted, and I thought, oh, you know, he's he's not this go-go guy on stage. He's a regular guy that I can just have a conversation with, and I was more impressed with that than seeing you what you had. What, seeing you on stage and the fact that we can connect with you and talk with you when we need to. I mean, that's the best, one of the best things of your program. Well, thank, thank you, Marcy. I appreciate that. So gang, this is about taking your network and growing them into potential clients. Okay. So I want to talk to you for a little bit, just for a couple of minutes about something pretty serious here. And that is everybody in your network, everybody in your life are really going to fall into one of two categories. They're either going to be a buoy or an anchor. It's just how it is. They're going to be clients of yours that are going to be buoys and they're going to be clients of yours that are going to be anchors. They're going to be spouses, ex-spouses. Mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, some are going to be buoys and lift you up, and some are going to be anchors that drag you down. There are going to be masterminds that you go be a part of that are going to be buoys. There are going to be coaching programs, hopefully, that you join that are going to be buoys. There are meetups that you're going to go be a part of that are buoys, 
like-minded people, the community of your peeps. These are all buoys. Our job as business people, let's face it, not everybody understands what we do. Most of the time, my, like my family has no idea what I do, right? They don't get it. They're not my peeps. They're only peeps by DNA. I got to go get fed where I'm, where I'm going to get fed what I want to eat. And that is being around like-minded people about business and talk about business. I get jazzed. I get super fired up. I get super excited about it. Those are my buoys. Those are my peeps. When I get to get to love on my clients and look at our mastermind and see who's in there and see what they're doing and what they're accomplishing. And I get to celebrate that. Like that is my buoy juice. Our job is to get rid of the anchors. Some of us have a lot of anchors that we can't get rid of. And I understand that in which case you need to have more buoys that outweigh the anchors. Okay. The way we like to do this is I like to sit at the intersection of transactional and transformational business. Some of it's very transactional, right? Click here, do this, get some automation, create this. The, the transformational component is the mindset piece. What's going on in between your ears? What's the context that you're playing the game of business? How big are you playing? How good can you stand it? How fun can it be when you go out three years and you look backwards and go, oh my gosh, I had no idea how to get there. Sometimes it's just about shaking things up a bit and allowing people to come into your space and into your business um, is huge. Okay. So what, I, what I'd like to do is um, what I want to know what happens if you do nothing. If you do nothing, nothing's going to change in the business. Nothing's going to change in the business. Okay. So you guys, what I'd like to do is I, I've tried to coordinate this so that it all happens. And I think it's actually happened. The stars have aligned and it's all come together. Um, I want to take just a few minutes and share with you a little bit about our Platinum Inner Circle program. I've kind of mentioned it. I've kind of talked about it. Um, I want to actually share with you what the program is, what's included, how it all works. I only want to spend a few minutes doing this. So what I'm going to do is I've asked four of our Platinum Inner Circle members if they would jump on and just take one or two minutes and share their experience, having worked with this, having worked with me, worked with our Platinum Inner Circle program. Now I'm gonna tell you that there is, a, there is a premium platinum program. I'm gonna tell you right up front, it's 25,000 bucks, okay? There's only five slots available. We've got three of them already taken. Um, these are for folks that are pretty further along in their business. It's a really, a really in-depth one-on-one time with me, okay? Um, that's not for everyone. I totally get that. So I wanna focus on our Platinum Inner Circle, which is our business coaching mastermind program. Okay. And I've asked four of our current members if they would share their experience and the results they've got as a result of being here. And then I'm going to like share with you guys what we're going to do. And then we'll, uh, we'll go crush and crush and take a break. So, um, first, like, I'd like to invite Laura. Where's Laura? Is she here? Yeah, there she is. Hey, Laura. Hello. I, by the way, I just want to say uh, uh, when I, um, when I reached out to these four individuals and asked if they would be willing to come and share, um, Laura's, uh, Laura's response was actually my favorite. She just wrote F yes. Um, uh, and, uh, I just was like, oh, I'm so thrilled and excited. Cause she's awesome. And I don't actually think she said that. I think she said freaking yes. I'm not going to put a swear word in her <laughs> mouth, but, <laughs> but I know what she was thinking. So Laura, um, sh share with us a little bit about your, uh, your experience. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Casey, for having me here and um, inviting me to share. And I have, I don't know about any of you, but every time I come on to Networking Riches, I always have nuggets. So I actually have an, another document open with little nuggets and notes on there and things to follow up and talk with Casey about. But my, I'm, I'm super grateful and blessed to have been able to meet Casey. Um, I actually don't know if I've ever shared this, but, um, the first networking riches I went to, I wasn't really sure until like the night before that I was actually going to go. And the person that had shared it with me, I grilled that person because one of my biggest pet peeves in the industry is going to something when they promise to deliver X value and then not getting any of that value and just feeling like I'm being constantly sold to another thing. 
And being a coach as well and being in that industry, in addition to real estate, it was just not something that I wanted to mess with. And that person assured me that in fact, told me you and Casey are very similar. I think you're going to love him. So finally I agreed to come and I'm so, so glad that I did. And that was in the fall of 2018. And I knew I wanted to work with Casey, but I literally left two days later to go to um, help with emergency cleanup at Hurricane Michael in Florida. And so it wasn't until um, like, I think it was January of 2019 when I got to see Casey again, when he was back out here in Colorado. And then I signed up into Networking Riches and um, it's completely changed my world. I had a lot of things that happened unexpectedly during that time that I don't really know how else I would have got through it the way I have and have continued to thrive if it hadn't been for Casey and the Platinum Inner Circle group and all the friends and amazing people that I have met through that. So through that journey, um, I have gotten to where I have stopped being a spoke in everyone else's wheel and hub because I'm really great at helping everyone else build their businesses and letting it run and not taking care of myself or my own businesses. And now I am building my businesses so that I'm not only working on my business, but I'm moving and shifting to where I'm working above my businesses and I'm creating leverage in my life. So in fact, when we were on that Platinum Inner Circle cruise with my real estate team that I'm building, I got my first leverage, what I call my leverage checks. And that was a closing that an agent had on my team that it closed while I was on a cruise um, with these amazing people. And it got deposited in my account without me even being there. So that was really awesome. And I had had a lot of other goals and things that I, um, because of my background and some of my childhood things, and I think we all go through different things. I really dealt with the fact of not feeling good enough, not feeling worthy and deserving. And so through that, and by Casey allowing me to be me, which is also really important because I don't do boxes. And a lot of people have always tried to put me in their box which doesn't work for me. And Casey's never done that. He's always found a way to ask me to grow and to stretch me while honoring who I am and my geniuses and my strengths without asking me to be someone that I'm not. And I have loved that. And so it's never been about, well, you need to pick and choose. It's always been about, well, if this or that or is it a now thing or is it a future thing? And really figuring out like, what's that strategic plan so that it it could be everything. I mean, it really is that um, place of anything as possible. It's just a matter of like, what does that look like? And it's not so much why it's, it's more of who and finding that who and then the what and then moving that forward. And so he's been able to um, help me do that. And I always say, don't hire a coach that doesn't have a coach. And cause we're all human and we all get in our own way. And he's been able to help me get out of my own way and give me a swift kick in the ass sometimes um, to move forward, which I love. And so to be able to work with him and everyone in this amazing group, I mean, even just the members of platinum inner circle, they're always there for you, rooting you on and cheering you on. Even when you're not as super present or involved in the Facebook group sometimes like myself, but um, I can't think Casey and the team. I mean, the team is awesome. Linda, Dan, Ryan, YT, Helen, they're all just amazing and incredible people. Um, and so my real estate business is growing and we're building that and leverage in my real estate team, as well as some other endeavors. Um, I just bought my first Bitcoin recently, which I was always interested in, but it never would have happened if it hadn't been for Casey because I trust him and I know he's not going to lead me astray. And so a lot of amazing things are happening and then be able to work with him and Ryan and the team in the premium platinum program has been incredible already. And so some major changes are coming, including launching a real estate investors network here in Colorado. And um, I'm excited to see what happens with that. And then with the text exercise, because I moved from Colorado to from Kansas City, um, people in my real estate group there, I reached out to and they're like, oh my gosh, we have to meet. And there's some different real estate investment opportunities coming up. So my phone's been blowing up since we did the little text exercise, which is awesome. So anyways... I could keep going on and on, but I don't want to do that. I want to honor everyone's time. And I just wanted to say thank you so much, Casey. Awesome. Thanks, Laura. And mark my words, she will be um, the real estate investor go-to uh, in both Kansas City and Colorado Springs slash Denver um, in very, very short order. And I could not be uh, I could not be more excited. One of the things that's really cool since Laura is part of our premium platinum partnership, um, 
I let her in on exactly the blueprint that I'm running for my own business. And we're going to run her business literally right side by side with me. Um, and we're going to duplicate everything that I'm doing here in LA, duplicate it right out in Colorado Springs. So I'm super excited. Thanks, Laura, for jumping in. Uh, I appreciate you very much. My pleasure. I appreciate you too. Um, next up is Jeff. I think we have Jeff with us. Jeff is a, an interesting guy. One of my favorite people because he's just a gsd -er. He just gets stuff done. And when I first met J Jeff, are you with me? At first, I, I am. Can you hear me? I am. Uh, here's the funny thing. When I first met Jeff, um, Jeff kind of creeped me out. I'm going to be honest with you. And the reason he creeped me out is because when we first jumped on our first call together, he had gone and watched so many videos of mine on, on YouTube and all over the internet that he knew my stories better than I knew my stories. And it literally, the phone call for him talking about coming on board with Platinum Inner Circle was pretty much like, do you take a wire? Um, and it was because the levers that I had created in creating videos and testimonials and people talking to him about what we did, we had a quick conversation and he was just like, dude, I'm ready to rock and roll. And what I love about working with Jeff is every time I talk to him, right, he'll just like lay out a little nugget. And I'll go, well, let's go tease on that. And we've created some amazing things out of assets that we didn't even know. Maybe he didn't even know he had. And it just took somebody rattling it a little bit and coming up with some really cool things. So um, this is Jeff. And he runs a major promotional products and screen printing embroidery company. It is just, you guys are going to hear from him. Jeff, where are you, my friend? I know that you're at like a, a martial arts thing or something today. My grandson has a Taekwondo tournament. And uh, so we're up here. But um, anyway, to get uh, to uh, how I met Casey is I was involved in a, a different company. It was a card company to send cards and treats to your uh, customers because I wanted retention. I, I never really heard this before until I heard it from Casey. I've heard uh, people need to like, know and trust you. But I remember you. Uh, I didn't hear that. So anyway, I was listening to Casey because I couldn't get fed through this other card company. They had. I didn't really like their videos. I didn't relate to them uh, on uh, YouTube. So I come across Casey and I started listening to him. And then I realized I really didn't like that card company as much as I thought I did. So I joined another card company under Casey uh, as my sponsor or as my upline or I don't know, an affiliate. I'm not sure the right terminology. So that's how I wanted to meet Casey. I had no intention on doing anything else other than sending thank you cards, birthday cards, treats to my current customers and prospects. And then we got to talking and Casey said, you know, I have this mastermind group and right away a red flag went up because I thought I've been in masterminds where you pay 25 grand. Uh, one year I spent a hundred thousand dollars and I come home and I was like, I told my wife, I'm quitting all that stuff because if you can't implement this stuff, what good is it? Entrepreneurs don't usually need more ideas. They need a, an implementation team and they need someone with some structure, some follow through and some coaching. And um, so I said, uh, nah, I don't know about that. So then I was thinking on a little bit more and he goes, well, the price goes up, you know, at the end of the year, no pressure. And I was sitting there getting, actually, I was getting a pedicure with my wife and I thought, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to him. I said, Hey, I'm going to sign up tomorrow. I did. We had a conversation and uh, I joined that uh, uh, mastermind, a uh, platinum inner circle. And that was, that is good. And I thought, you know, I was getting excited and I thought I need more access to, to Casey. I got a few things that I want to work out. I'm trying to buy out some screen printing companies that are going out of business to buy their clientele list. And I thought that'd be a great way to generate some revenue for our company. And um, so I, we started talking and, and he gave me a few pointers and stuff. And then I made some calls and I realized I hate this. I don't want to do this at all. And uh, so I said, Casey, I said, I'm not doing that. I said, I want to do something else. So then we came up, he looked at my business overall. He said, Hey, you have a, a large Facebook following. I think right now it's 103,000 real active. And um, so with him and Ryan, Actually, it started with Ryan a little bit more because we had a little, I said, I need this blueprint session. And um, so he said, we'll build a uh, landing page. We'll do this. And I said, OK, well, give me an estimate. So now I was getting a little nervous because I thought, how much is this going to cost me really to have this done? I've already invested, I think it was like 7000 And I thought, I don't want an open checkbook. And then I called another uh, Platinum Inner Circle member. And I said, hey, I said, how much did this run you when you had it done? He goes, it was included. 
And I was like, they build you a landing page and it's included in the $7,000 and, and you have one-on-one calls with Casey. He goes, yeah. And I said, just break this down because I have a GED. I just want to know. So there's no hidden cost. He goes, no, he goes, they told me one time they were going to send me a bill for like 300. They never sent it to me. I was like 300. So then immediately I was super excited. So we come up with this plan to where we take my run for life. I own a, a Facebook page called run for life. And we would take that and we pull some ambassadors and we start another group to where we could market to them. And we'd pay these ambassadors uh, a little bit of commission if they promoted my company, Lynn Pro. And we did that. I said, I only want five members in that group. I, I can't handle many. I just want five that I can focus on. Well, that was a month and a half ago, and we got 369 in there now. And I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. So the thing with what I like about Casey and Ryan is every time I leave a conversation with Casey or Ryan, I'm super nervous. I'm super afraid that I don't know what I'm doing, but it just seems to be working. And uh, so I'll just tell you. Casey was going on a cruise. He goes, I got something that I want to talk to you about when I get back from a cruise. And I was like, okay. And I said, I need more access. I said, I'd be willing to pay in a super group. If you could have a super group, I said, I'd be willing to pay more so I could have more access because now I see some possibilities. And that's, that's when he come back and said, you know, it's going to be this price and we do monthly pay or we do monthly payments. And I was like, I don't need about one payment. Just send me the, I had to contact him like three or four times in a day to have him send me the wire instructions again, because I wanted to join because in my business, I want to stay relevant. You know, Casey, he told me, he said, you know, your, your business is going to be 10 to $15 million off this idea. I was super excited about that. I got to admit, I thought, man, I'm going to go out for supper and order a big steak or something. We're going to do so great. And then I realized, you know, even in what he's telling me, and I, and I can't do it all, if I do half of it. Good luck on your journey. Have an amazing day. Let's get out there and get at it. Ciao for now.